from Africa. Remember that. White people are scared to death right now, particularly white males. They're scared to death that they are going to lose their power in the future. And they are. African Americans here, but they recently moved here from places like Kenya, Ethiopia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Zaire. But now the brother whose family's lived in this country for generations, occupying space in all the locations, New York, Miami, LA, Detroit, Chicago, even if he's wearing a dashiki and sporting an afro. And if you go to Africa in search of your race, you'll find out quick, you're not an African American. You're just a black American in Africa taking up space. And we are not African. We are not African. Are you an African, baby? I'm Slowly, so we already in too deep. Can't get no sleep on each other. Heavy teasing all day, and when the sun sets, you asking me to come through, kick it with you. Night turns to morning too. Then you.
kisses like I do My place like you do Hey! Smash that like button, y'all. Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. What's good, everybody? I slept pretty much all day. So I got my rest on today because I, I don't normally go live late at night like that. But it was so damn dead last night. Um. Hey, Corey. Hey, Niji Warrior. Copper Aborigines. Y'all shy ones, hit the like button. And we're going to get into another touchy topic. And I'm going to ask questions. And it's going to require people from the Boomer Answer to Answer questions for them to answer. They're going to have to answer if they're in the air. Um, and I'm going to ask. Uh, um, um, I, um, you know, I ask all the time. And today, I'm going to ask. And I'm not being ignorant. I'm, you know, there's a lot of war. There's wars going on, supposedly, in the Middle East. But it, that doesn't concern me. None of that over there. I do not care about what's going on in the Middle East. I don't. Now, what? What? the only thing that would bother me about the Middle East war is if their airstrikes hit here and harm us. Then I can honestly say, before I drop dead, None of us are protected and none of us are getting our, our equal rights and protection because now we're all dead from the airstrikes from another country. So that's my only concern. And hopefully nothing like that happens over here. Um, so other than that, I don't care what goes on off of uh, on any landmass. My only concern is North American landmass. Seriously, I could care less. Those are not my countries. I'm not from there, and I don't care. Um, a guy came on and raised issues about, um, and first of all, not understanding that America, North America, and United States are two different um, things. They don't understand that United States is a country that sits on my ancestor soil which happens to be North America. And I am, as you see, American Indian. I'm American Indian. And I'm very proud to be American Indian. I am not from Africa. Okay. And the hardest thing to get, because white people, all people, foreigners that come over here, think and feel that they are uh, Americans. And they're not. They're United States citizens. And that's what's oftentimes left out of textbooks and any everything. And I guess because this government feels that, okay, we got to 50 states, so we have all the land. No, all the other land literally belongs to the aboriginals. And don't forget, it's not just North American mainland that is the North American continent. The North American continent consists of North America, South America, and Central America. Okay, when you hear places like the Caribbean, that's North America. Okay, that's literally North America. And then you have South America. Okay, Mexico is North America. There's South American countries. All right, um, check your email, isness. Um, you have um, Central America. And don't forget, also part of North America is Canada. That's part that's on the continent of North America. Okay. But I'm on what you call the mainland. And this is where my ancestors have occupied this land for time infinitely. Time infinite at this point, because I have no proof of them being anywhere else but here. And being here when every foreigner entered this soil. OK, I come from a history of where my racial identification has been hidden. OK, uh, the, the uh, plan was to dismantle and get rid of the brown skinned person. That's the Indian. 
And they did a very good job with hiding our true history. They even made up a story about our history because we're brown skinned and said that we came here on slave ships. And that's not true. My family going back to the 1800s never discussed or passed down a history of their grandparents coming on the soil uh, on slave ships. They always just talked about family. Nothing. We never even sat at a dinner table and say, hey, Uncle Mabanku Bampu is in Africa because those conversations just didn't come up in our home. We knew nothing about slave ships. And that wasn't hidden from us in school because when we were little, we knew about Africans and people on the African continent because when we were little, they used to show little commercials with the little black kid with a bug flying on their face with swollen bellies and starving. That's how I learned what an African was, okay? And even at that point, when all those commercials used to come on about feeding the hungry, when I was little, not once did my granny ever said, hey, those are your family, that's your family over there, and uh, we should be sending them money and supplying them with food. We, she would have known, but they weren't. They were little dark-skinned kids that looked severely poor, living in severe poverty. The poverty that they lived in in those days, when I was a little girl seeing those commercials, they were always really sad to me. And it was very, very disturbing to see little children with bowls of food that looked like it might be rice or oatmeal digging in it and white people carrying one of the babies saying, feed the hungry children. But when I was little, our, our family never spoke about that type of history being in our family or something like that going on uh, that were related to people over there. It just did not come up. Now, my grandmother was born in 1931. She would have known. My great-great-grandmother was born in 1908. My great-great-great-grandmother was born in um, 1878. My great-great-great-great-great-grandmother was born in 1837. And then her parents born in damn near the seven, late 1700s. So, I mean, some of that information would have been passed down, okay? The 1800s are not, it's not a very, very long time ago where we didn't pass. We know what we know today, and that's it. No history or speakings. We would know because all Indians do. And this soil is gossip and word gets around fast. We would all know it. But no one ever talks about a history of their families coming off slave ships. And I done been through the 50 states. Nobody had that story at their dinner tables is what I'm saying to you. So our history, a history was put on us that, never happened. Now, they did talk about slavery um, of, of Indians, okay? But they never, because it happened so long ago, by the time we got in public school systems, they already had a, 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 a picture of people um, in little school books about Indians being slaves. But we learned Indian words as in English class, we had to spell them. And I do remember saying to my teacher, why do we have to learn these long words? And they would look up. She would look up at the what was an assistant teacher I always had in the classroom. Hey, that's you. It's, uh, let, me, uh, let me just make sure. Let me put up my overlay. I was going to have you turn your camera on. Oh, let me put my overlay up. I got to protect myself. YouTube says to do this. They recommended that I do this. I still didn't get the help yet to. Oh, you. Uh, I'm putting my overlay up now, sweetheart. I still don't see you <laughs> back there. I still don't see you. I don't see you. I see your pretty background. <laughs> That's it. That's too funny. I do not see you. Anyway, that's you though, right? 
Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll take this off. Take this off. Can you? So, okay. yep, I can hear you very good. So, I never heard anything in my history about it, and I'm sure a whole lot of people, I asked people in my tribe, nobody had that conversation at the table about a history of slaves. Like I said, Indians talk, and we would have known if we had cousins, if you fell off, it says your device is not connected, it's this. We would know if we had relatives over in Africa. So that's, I'm, I'm very much into our history now. And I've been doing extensive and extensive research. And every time I learn something, I share it. Hey, hey, they're pulling the fast one. That's what it really feels like to me at this point. Hey, wait a minute. You know, hey, something's up. And it, everyone knows, okay, this is a, um, United States is a country that gave citizenship to our ancestors. Um, yes, it was the Snyder Act. Um, and well, it, even if we didn't want to be, they enforced the um, uh, uh, 13th, 14th Amendment, 14th, 15th, 15th Amendment. And you became a citizen even if you were, if you were born here. But at, we still weren't getting those rights. If you were born in the United States, okay, and automatically they said, like, if you were born here, if you were already here, you were born here prior to passing that law, whatever state that you live in, that state has jurisdiction over you. So, yeah. So, we were made citizens beyond our being going through any policies that was put together on how to become a citizen. We didn't go through that as a people. We didn't. They're, they just automatically applied the law to us. And um, the, another most very interesting thing, if you're talking about the actual planet Earth, I'm talking about the planet Earth. We are the only beings on the planet Earth with like eight different racial classifications as Indians. And the op, the point was to hide who we are. And th th there was, um, there is noted in the constitution, Indian not taxed. So the only way we could benefit from being United States citizens is if we came in under false uh, racial classifications that they gave us, which resulted in, because we were Indians, they thought we were, they, they called us Indians. At, we were Aboriginals. So they we, we got all these other uh, racial identities. Before that, we were the tribe we were. If we was the doo-doo tribe, that's who we was. If we, we was the peepee -pee tribe, the tribe of big wee-wees, that's the tribe we were. Okay? Seriously. And then it became this um, Indian thing. Then Negro, then colored, then um, blacks in the English language, then mulattoes, and then uh, uh, Afro-Americans. That's a hairstyle because we wore Afro. Our hair was always just out. And then you got 1988, Jesse Jackson. Oh, members of my community want to be called African-American. Well, I'm not from Jesse Jackson's community, so it certainly didn't apply to me because I never met Jesse Jackson, and neither did my parents or grandparents. We're not even from the state that he's from, so he certainly wasn't representing us, okay? That's when African-American racial identity came out. So we're dealing, as a people, we're dealing with all these identities. Like, who the fuck are we? But the most interesting thing about this is all other continents know that we are the original people. And the very first people to say and put their heads down because they knew for sure who we are and were and are are the Chinese. They put their heads down when they see this because they know that this is our soil. They already knew. And other countries knew too. However, when they came over here, they were taught that we were the bad people. 
So everybody, before uh, any foreigner entered this country, they were already pre-warned that we were a horrible group of people and savages and everything else. I don't know. I wasn't fucking living in that time. I read stories and that's it. So, and um, that's that. So with that being said, I want to get in. Let me shout out to Adam Real, OG Green Machine, uh, Mad Dog, Keith West. Let me see if that's you, girlfriend. T.Y. Richard, Big Dog. Uh, let's see, Corey. Um, Capper Aborigines, Niji Warrior. Let me put my overlay back up. And all the, everybody watching, please smash the like button and honor to you if you're watching. We're going to get into a touchy, another touchy subject because I'm going to ask some real legit questions. And I'm just going to say some some things. I'm coming. I'm coming now. It's this stuff. I just got to put this DM overlay back up because people make a quick. You're good, baby. You can, you can turn it off, sweetheart. I see you. I see you, honey. You're here. You're up here now. Yes. Okay. I can take the overlay off now. Let me take it off. Okay. Here we go. So, here's what I'm. I'm. With that being said, all that being said, prior uh to um prior to 1920. 20, 21 anyway. We as Indians, aka Negroes, we have businesses all through the South, our ancestors. They had stores, they had every kind of business you can think of. And that's a fact. In every state, we had businesses, everything. We were making uh, medicine and people was using it. Using our remedies and methods. That's what I've researched and learned until a point. Then their point came where all of our businesses were dismantled, especially in the South. They were just dismantled as businesses, bombed out, burned out, flooded out, whatever out, even in, up to including losing our homes. But this wasn't the first destruction from what I'm understanding. There were other destructions that wanted to, there were other atrocities that took place to destroy us as a people here. And like I read, when I read, and, and you know, I'm not a Bible thumper, but I read it because it's enforcements that's being placed upon us. And I remember that verse in the Bible. And I, I, I can't remember if it was in Genesis. I believe it's in Genesis. When the earth was um, destroyed, I can't even remember what goddamn verse it was in. But it was when Lot's, I guess, daughter or wife or whatever turned into a pillar of salt because she turned around. Do you remember that verse? I'm trying to look it up. <laughs> it was it when Lot's turn. He God told her his wife not to turn around, and she's going to turn into a pillar of salt. And she turned into a pillar of salt. Now I know that's supposed to be a myth, but does anybody remember that verse in the Bible? I, it's still there, I believe. And if she turned around and looked at how he was destroying the earth, that she would uh, turn into a pillar of salt and told her to keep going, keep going. And she turned around and she turned into a pillar of salt. And I believe because there were no men um, around to till the soil that his daughters went and got him drunk and went and got pregnant by him. Do y'all remember that in the Bible? It is saying it's Genesis 19, 26. 
But lots of ways to look say? back. Yes. Um, my computer is back. going a little slow today. Then, and then it gets into, and then it gets to them needing a man around. Okay, Genesis 1926. You, you, you could read that verse back because I don't even got it up. It it says, but Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Okay. And I know prior to that, it's because God told her or someone told her, don't look back while he, because then she's going to see how he's destroying the, 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 destroying the area. Now, if you look at that and our if ancestors. You want me to read did. it? It's, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Read maybe a little bit before so we could figure out who she's talking to. That tour don't look bad. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start at the beginning of chapter 19. And it says, the two angels arrived at Sodom in the, in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to uh, greet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My, my lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answer, we will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered into the house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread with yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Saddam, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, where are the men who came to you? Came to you tonight bring them out to us so that we can ha have sex with them lot went outside to meet them and and shut the door behind him and said no my friends don't do this wicked thing look i have two daughters hold on never right slept there with the man. <laughs> hold on right there hold on right there so even back then these creeps wanted to sleep with the men instead of the women. They wanted the two angels that came to Lot's house. So it must have been some beautiful creatures. I don't know. Or the guys that said, no, we want to uh, have sex with the men. So you know that they were creeps back then. And so he offered his daughters. Go ahead. Okay. So he said, look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and uh, you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men for they have some, um, they have come under the protection of, of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. This, this fellow came here as a foreigner and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They, they kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back, in, back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, do you have anywhere, um, anyone else here? Son, Sons-in-law, sons or daughters or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here. Because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord um, against this people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking with the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, uh, who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is um, punished. You're breaking up. When he hesitated, you're breaking up. the men grabbed. Okay. Is it, you're you're breaking up, so you got to go back. Let me see. Try, try it again. With the coming of the dawn. The angels urged Lot, saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, 
flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plane. It, anywhere in the plane. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, no, my lords, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life, but I can't flee to the mountains. The disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Uh, look here, is a town near enough to run to and it is small, let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, very well, I will grant this request. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town was called Zor. By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had uh, risen over, it, over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Saddam and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain destroying all of these living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Okay. So I'm just wondering, going back in that, where they, when, when they want, they insisted on wanting to sleep with the men and um, to the point where they, because they didn't want the women. And um, so they came in and kicked the door down and the two, angels blind them so i'm thinking yo I, I can only think in modern day terms they had cans of mace to blind them and shit i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> i'm just asking something to blind they ass um and uh so you 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 you're talking about you're telling you not to look back and they're saying sulfur. And I heard the other day uh, 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 when I was listening to Ali Muhammad about sulfur. And he was like, um, white people were uh, affected or made with that. I didn't, I don't know the whole story, but I don't even need to go there. But my point is just based on them saying they're going to destroy a particular city. All right. And for them not to look back. They didn't want the people to see them. Now, this is so interesting because if you're trying to say that this is that area, this here North American landmass is that empire that was going down, then that means the same people that are going around destroying cities, whole cities with mass destructions. I, could he, it seems like it's the same people. It's a continued pattern of practice is what I'm, I'm getting at here. So you have the nobody else in the world has that ability. But uh, those in power, like you, uh, the United States can destroy a whole city and they do that. They do. And then they go and rebuild them back up with our tax dollars. Um. China can do it, I, I believe. And there's probably some other countries that can just like take out whole cities. I could be wrong in that, but the last I checked, they can do this. So uh, this is why I'm saying, um, you know, this practice is, is very real. And uh, the fact that she turned around, why didn't you want her to turn around? Because it's hard to sit there and look at someone destroying their own people. So, I mean, uh, you're you're just taking out your own people, and you don't have a problem with it. But is are, are these forces our people? Because we were in power back in those days on our soil. We were as aboriginals, we were in power back in those times. So when you see um cities under the water and shit like that, have did we have a practice of taking out 
I'll use a modern day word, a whole municipality and flooding it out. Do we not do this now? Right. I mean, we don't turn into pillars of salt, but we might as well be if we're going to be floating in all that nasty ass water. Right. And, right. Um, so I, I, I'm just saying that to say, you know, you, you told her, I just thought it was very interesting that he said to her, don't turn around and look, or she's going to turn into a pillow of salt. And it, 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 is he doing that so that she couldn't be a witness of what's taking place and be able to uh, communicate that to future gen generations of what she saw, how she saw this being destroyed and who, and I able to identify who was doing this. And they, uh, they being the lords, because that's how a lot greeted them as they were lords. So I just thought that that's just very, very interesting. And the fact that United States have weapons that where they could take out whole municipalities. They, they have flood those, out whole town. Huh? They do. They also have um, those energy weapons that they can uh, direct from space. So they have that also. Are we the out. only country that have that ability or what other countries have that ability to do that? I, I believe China can do it. China has actually demonstrated that they can do it. And that's when you see those funny looking lightnings. Uh, okay, that's those energy weapons. I thought it was China. I did mention China. I couldn't think of. I think they're just the only two, right? I'm not sure. You know, Russia. Only reason why I say are, yeah. Only reason why I say are they the only two is because other countries um come to us for protection and weapons. So I mean, if they had the ability to take out a whole town, wouldn't they? So obviously they didn't have they don't have the power United States and China have. That's the only reason why I'm saying that. I could just be assuming, but I'm just, you know, dialoguing. But anyway, um that being said, hiding, don't look back. Why would you tell a woman, don't yo, don't look back, just keep going. Do not look back. So she must have turned around to watch and, and was able to visually see how it was being destroyed, but not able to live to tell it. So now we don't know because she turned into a pillar of her side. But my thing is, who was there around? Who was around there to be able to confirm that she turned into a pillar of her side and then wrote it down on the book and said, that's what happened to her? Did you follow me? <laughs> Who's the witness that said she turned into a pillow of salt. Because obviously you would have turned around and see that, oh shit, she's a pillar of salt. So you turned around, shouldn't you be frozen in the pillar of salt too? I'm just asking like common questions. Is that a fair question to ask? That is a fair question. <laughs> Who turned around? Yeah, because I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, who, well, how, how were you, you know, able to know be, she turned how, Huh? It could be common sense because they said, don't turn back, don't look back, and then all of a sudden your wife's not there no more. So whoever the narrator is is probably like, oh, they got her. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I, I would not, and when I would ask the questions when I was little, and this is when I was a little girl, I remember asking this question. They couldn't answer the damn question. I said, well, who was there that saw her turn into a pillow of a sun? And they wouldn't answer me. So I had to get my little ass out. Because when I was very little, I could read really good and comprehend. And I would, I said, well, who who saw her turn into a pillow of a sun? And they wouldn't they could answer my question. So you just... You just need to, you just need to know so much. You just, you know, I was just asking too many questions, so I would ask questions if I didn't understand. But anyway, I'm I say this because this country still has that ability to destroy a complete country, 
take the whole country out. So this is why I say this has got to be heaven because the only one powerful to do that would be God in that time. And it's still practiced here on this soil. But to me, it seemed like if, uh, did, did, did God send, um, create somebody to manage heaven? Or are they just invaders just on the soil? Did God create somebody to continue cre uh, uh, managing heaven? Because the original people of the landmass are feeble-minded, stupid, and can't run heaven? I ask those questions. Because you don't own the own land. You have it by, uh, by your... Uh, weapon backups, but you can't own a whole or take over a whole country and say that we're now we're the Americans because the real ones are still here, and to do that is just like outright wicked. It, it's crazy. So, that being said. Do maybe being um, turned into a pillar of salt doesn't necessarily mean death, right? Maybe that's why I said it could be like a, a a metaphor or something, or a simile, a metaphor, or it could be a um, what do you call it? What is the word I'm trying to uh, to use here? Like the tree is actually not a tree, but it's an individual that has roots and it has yeah. leaves, which is the it's a person. What do we call it? What do we it's call that? We call it? Yeah, there you go. A metaphor. Okay. <laughs> it could be just a metaphor. I have not figured that metaphor out, including when they blind them. They they blind them. And the only thing I can think of is what the hell blind them so they could get out and run is mace. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, if I'm thinking real quick in today's terms. But I'm sure if I look further into it, or I could, some type of some type of light, a flashbang or something, you know, uh, some type of a, a bomb type of, you know, I don't know. Go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, let me take this um banner down because now we about to get into it because I have questions. Oh, that's it. Trivia TV live say America is hell. I don't see it as hell because why am I happy? I've never seen anyone happy in hell. <sighs> but anyway, um, so or I before you move on from this, before you move on, you know, if you look at this uh, scripture that you just and you want to bring bring America into it, it looks like the part that America, um, you know, all this the overtaking of the the men having sex with men and where they don't want the women, that part of the country was destroyed. So it, and it wasn't like the whole world was destroyed. It was just the evil parts were destroyed. And, you know, we have all these um, diseases like AIDS and all kind of um, a stuff going on. And so it, if you don't leave from that and, you, and, and move on from that, then you could be destroyed by just a disease. So. And that doesn't mean that um, the place was hell. It just means that a certain part of it was was destroyed. So in there, it does read that there will be incurable diseases. It also mm -hmm. says that in the Bible. There will be incurable diseases, meaning like there's nothing on the soil that will save you from specific diseases. You will not be able to get rid of them. Right. So anyway... I just thought, I always thought as a little girl that that was a very interesting book to read. So let's get into the topic. What happened after 1921 when my Negro brothers and sisters' businesses were dismantled? So <laughs> I'm looking at what we call the great divide of our people. This is the biggest divider of our people. 
We done been through this. The birth of indoctrination and the great divide amongst the American Indians timeline. And I'm looking at this. You got the Christianity. I say it because they came here in Massachusetts with their Bible. And the Indians began liking it. Then years and years went by where we're in the 18th century. And the more science temple came out because they they they, they were established. Then um, they didn't want to do Christianity no more. So lots of our people got into the nation of Islam, five percenters, Sunni Muslims, all these religions. Okay. Now, here's the biggest question I have. Like I, like I said, look at the power that these leaders have over our people. That smart Luther King with a crowd of our people and Christianity. Okay. And that that that's Christianity. Power over the people, Christianity. Then you got the Moors, who was another, they're across these 50 states. More power over our people. Okay. Then you got another religious organization with more power over our people that come to them for guidance. Then you got these guys, the five percenters. Lots of our people across the 50 states are into the five percenter. Okay, not just here across these 50 states. Then you got these guys, Hebrew Israelites. They have a group of a lot of our men transitioned out of prison between all these religions. Okay. Then you got this guy at the political pose. Who is Al Sharpton? Okay. You got Al Sharpton with a lot of power of our people. Then you got Jesse Jackson, large following of our people. Then you got Huey Newton. Okay. All these different divides. And I'm showing all these pictures. And I can turn my camera back on. I'm showing all of these different movements that establish in our communities across these 50 states. Seriously. All these different organizations have power over the minds of our people. Now, you had the dismantling of the Negroes, businesses, all over these states, because we have businesses in the North and the South, so many in the South, and the North too. But I think this was more in the South and in the Midwest and the West period. We had a lot of businesses and they were dismantled. I just don't know how they were dismantled. Uh, I mean, they were bombed out, burned out, flooded out, whatever out. Okay. And I said, okay, those were terrible events, atrocities that took place. Okay. And then we were forced off our lands into the inner cities because at that point we didn't have any businesses. So now you have all these religious groups that I just showed you, and I'll keep flashing them up. Christianity, more Christianity, Nation of Islam, five percenters, Hebrew Israelites, more Christianity. Um, then you have these leaders, all Christian, Christianity, Muslim, and those, the big great divide. 
You have all this going on. And I'm like, what the hell? Okay. What happened where we didn't reestablish businesses is, is, is mind-boggling to me. Why? You, you have all those thousands of people, and I showed them to you. We, we see them. We, 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 we see this all the time. I, this should be down here. Oh, I forgot to mention. I did mention the Nation of Islam. But I'm going to put that up again. We got all these people. Okay. We got all these people. We got all these people. All these people. All his people. All these people. All these people. All these people. Watch. Okay. I'm saying that right now. And, and 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 I don't want to be ignorant to this, but these leaders are college educated. Did any why couldn't businesses be reestablished? Because um, here's the thing. All right, you have all these people, all of our people, right? And you have these people teaching and lecturing that the white man is the devil, he's Satan, he's a blue-eyed beast, he's all this. He's Satan, he's Satan. This is what they taught in our communities. The white man is the devil and he's Satan and all this stuff. And you had groups that said, don't be foolish, you are God. You're the God, the God in you. And all that stuff, all right? You're 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 teaching this to a community that's being indoctrinated with that mindset about a race of people, okay? And I get that, okay, because very bad things happened. But at the same time, all these, all of our people's businesses were dismantled, okay? And you're teaching this in the community about these people that supposedly dismantled all the black businesses across the 50 states. And you're teaching that they're the devil. But then you transition, you transition them to love each other. And I'm saying Nation of Islam because they did a very good job converting our men's behavior in the community to put to love each other. But then you said, hey, all, all these different other organizations, oh, white people's the devil, they're saying they're evil, they're bad. Um, what happened? But then I, I, you, you forgot to tell them that the same people that are the devil, you got to go and get them jobs from them. So you can take care of your family. So if I'm a white man and they see you on the news, I mean, and all these different organizations, Malcolm X, um, all these leaders, they had like news coverage. You eat. They, they had news coverage worldwide. And they in the Hebrew Israelites always get news coverage, all of them. And they're literally saying the white man's the devil. So now you that same person, you're you you going to a business to apply for a job, and the white guy looks at you. I'm the devil. I don't know what this guy might kill me. After you fucked your heads up or, or you told him these things my leaders that are boomers and all this stuff. You mean to tell me nobody couldn't fill out a fucking EIN number and teach them to start their own business? Because you, you can't teach somebody that somebody's devil to go and tell them, oh yeah, go apply for a job with the devil. But I'm confused. Uh, but, Help me out here. 
Okay, so it looks like if you look at the NOI, didn't they have the guys uh, working for them for that organization? You know, like selling the bean pies, selling the newspapers, uh, selling, as you said, the chicken baskets, I mean, the fish baskets and stuff. So, um, and in the church, you see that also is they tell you, uh, you know, to kind of volunteer. They don't even pay you, like maybe the NOI. I don't know if those people get paid, but they tell you to volunteer for them. So what's happening is you have these groups and, you know, they always warn you against groups. They warn you against that, right? Because you have this small group of people who are telling a mass uh, mass population what to do. And so they all told you to kind of suckle off of them, but they didn't tell you to be independent and to create your own and to build yourself up. And, and I'm going to go back to building your family. None of they telling you, you know, kind of like how the gangs do is that they are now your family. So, I, I, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to go too deep in that because they, they do kind of go into your family, but um, it seems like, what they are trying to do is get you to kind of nurture off of them. Okay. I guess my question is the nation of Islam was not making enough money to pay them to pay their rents and stuff. Cause they also have like that security business, right? Where they do security. So, so where, I'm trying to figure out what businesses did they reestablish so that the people, our people, that they were telling the white man is the devil. So now you have them militant minded about white people, right? But how are they going to get jobs from the same white people? Because when you're, to me, it makes more sense if you're going to be talking like that. You would have a whole bunch of companies, you know, like plumbing companies, electrical companies, all these other companies established because these same people, and you're in the face of the news, that which are our people. Where, where, where the jobs are going to go to now and apply for jobs? Since the white man really knows how they feel about it. Oh, we're the devil. So, you and I, I understand the notion of not wanting to let them in the corporation to work in their businesses because this guy is militant. He's a Malcolm X follower and I, I'm scared. What are your thoughts? No, I, I really get what you're saying. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. And um, it should have been a little bit more emphasis on um, what do they say? You you are God and master. I don't know what you, you know. I don't know the it. Presenters. But you know how they're telling you. Yeah, you know how they say all that. I myself a God and master or whatever they say is okay. Well then, let's get your businesses going. Let's uh, do business with each other. You know, let's create. You know. A, a great community and one great theme and it probably all boils back down to the christian theme is that if you have a little bit of money then you're somehow evil so nobody is being taught to prosper everybody is being taught to kind of scrape the bottom and nobody can sustain can sustain off of that for long so that's that christian right, which, group. Yeah. right. which um, it's like you've all been trained that the white man's the devil, but you're asking for a job now. And you've also been trained to be militant. The Hebrew Israelites, the five percenters, nation of Islam. But now you're holding signs up for jobs. What human being white person is gonna say because of our militant style if you a white person and people marching around like this in the 1920s 
and you have a white with a business, are you going to hire these dudes or how are you going to act when they come to your company for a job? And because you know that they're not going to hire you, why didn't Malcolm X and them start businesses? Why? Why didn't Martin Luther King start businesses? With all these people, they chip in money. You didn't even need a loan. We got so many fucking people. With this amount of many people, do you really need to go to a bank to get loans. Let's say all the wives in here is all their wives is at work. Because this is a million man march. You think do you really need a bank to go to a bank to get money? To start a business? You see where I'm going? I got you. If everybody gave a dollar in here, that's a million dollars. And if that's a million people. If they gave five dollars, how many millions is that? If they gave a hundred dollars. Do we really need to go to a bank to start a business with this amount of people? That's with Farrakhan. This with Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Martin Luther King, do you really need to go to a bank with all these Negroes? No. All these Negroes in here got kids. Right. And they're alive today. Please don't tell me that. We are a small population of people because that's bullshit. Just look at that. That is scary as fuck. Please. You mean to tell me in the 70s Jesse Jackson couldn't tell people to fill out a goddamn EIN number and or start your business? What? I'm 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 kind of lost right there. All right, let's put this up. You mean to tell me the boomer generation that was college, that's Jesse Jackson's era, the boomer generation. You mean to tell me after all these motherfuckers telling our ancestors, our people, that the white man's the devil and blah, 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 after that, you didn't start teaching them to fill out a damn EIN so they could start their own businesses back up? Yeah. Now, I know Jesse Jackson went to college. What was, why couldn't you tell them to start instead of fucking um, holding signs up in the 70s when you know that there's EIN forms where all these niggas could start their own plumbing business? They, they knew every career that there could be. They got skills in every career that they could be. Whether it's a restaurant, whether it's being a nurse, whether it's being an electrician. They was doing all these jobs before plumbers, you name it. Every trade that it could be, they already had it. Why didn't they have enough sense to fill out an EIN form and start their own businesses? Alibamo, can you please explain why when, when they was teaching that the white man's the devil, they didn't teach them to fill out EIN forms to open up their own fucking businesses because white people was not going to hire them because they see it on the news that you see them as devils and you're marching around with the Hebrew Israelites and Malcolm X, very militant style, ready to kill one of them. So why the fuck would I hire you in my company?
when you got these guys, they're all in the news, yep. right? Come on now. Make this make sense. I'm going to get these you dudes a have job. The statistics. I'm listening. No, 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 no. You got it, honey. I'm, no, I'm just time. saying, Please. like, you, and you also have all these statistics talking about how we just have, like, no job. Our unemployment rates really, really low. So you're right. A great solution to everybody would have been to start your own business. And you know you could just go and get you an EIN form from the office, from the wherever. I'm sure back then everything wasn't online. Like now it's just online. So there's no reason why somebody can't fill out an EIN number. I mean, it's easy. <laughs> but, you know, like I mean, you're like, saying, what's it's really the alternative? easy to, to go get a form. <laughs> what's the alternative of holding up signs for jobs you see it as big as day right job for all what was the problem where you couldn't fill out a EIN form and open up your own business so you wouldn't have to hold signs I'm just asking I'm not being ignorant I'm just asking could you think of something Were they scared they would get bombed out again? I mean, we're in the 70s now. It's control. The EIN number is controlled from opening up and starting your own business? No. <laughs> no. no. These, these groups, because Jesse Jackson is, is controlled by the Christian church. The Christian church goes back to the Catholic church. The Catholic church is not going to tell the Christian pastors to tell their congregations to um, to do for themselves. They want you to script and scrape to pay tithes and offerings and build their church. And that's all we've been told is to build these people's churches. Expect in the Christian community. I don't know about the Muslim community. You got it. I'll Christian be right back. You got it. Go ahead. Explain it to them, Esther. Well, I'm just going to say in the Christian community, we've been told to build these people's churches. And if our pastor looks good and does good and he goes on a mission, missions trip, then we're doing good. So we've been told to live through the pastor. Now, I don't know about the Muslims, but Farrakhan is sitting pretty, too. And so I'm. it looks like maybe those people are told as long as Farrakhan is, is, is sitting right, you know, they're doing good as well. So. Oh no. Okay, so I didn't hear what you said because I had to go and close this window. It got cold. So I I guess I just I'm asking because um I didn't hear what you said, sweetie. I stepped away. What did uh, you well, say? Well, I said that the Christian community has been told that as long as a pastor is doing good, they're doing good. So we have been brainwashed to build up their church or to make sure they have really nice cars, to make sure they get sent to Africa for a missions trip or they go to the conference with all the with T.D. Jakes and all these other different things. That's the Christian church. And I said, I don't know a lot about the Muslims. But if we look at the beginning, if we go all about way back to Noble Drew Ali, he was part of the Israelite community, which is the church. <laughs> so Ooh. what I'm saying is Noble Drew Ali started off as the Israelite. Right. Right. So there's your church. We go back to this Christianity thing, and I'm saying it go and the Christ, our 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 version of Christianity. It still goes back to the Pope, to the, the Catholic Church. And I'm just saying, do those people want us to have um, upward mobility? And so they're going, when they disseminate to what can be taught in the church, I don't think owning your own business or building up your communities is one of them. It's to go, especially nowadays, go build someone else's community up. <laughs> and you got to think. Right? Ain't that what they say? So you got to think, why are they all telling you to go build up someone else's community? 
You got to go on mission trips to build everybody else's community, but you don't have to build your own. They're not telling you to build your own. Go back to the impoverished areas of America and your communities. I'm going to say, you know, in California, we have East Oakland. Go back into East Oakland and in in the hundred blocks or the nineties and go build that up. You know, the church ain't going to tell you that. So you got to wonder why. And I don't know why the but, Muslims ain't doing that, but. But you got educated people, college education, educated people in the boomer generation. You're talking Malcolm X. You're talking Jesse Jackson. You're talking Al Sharpton. You, and I'm talking about the nation of Islam, highly intelligent. All right. You hear Malcolm X, uh, white people can help them, but white people can help, but they cannot join. How come he didn't say black people should not go and fill out jobs at white uh, corp companies? They should fill out EIN numbers and start their own businesses and get shit popping. How come he didn't say that on Nationwide TV? I'm just mimicking him. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught this. The uh, Honorable Elijah taught that. The Okay, did the Honorable uh, 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 Elijah Muhammad tell you to tell your congregation, men, black men that you transitioned from prison to fill out EIN numbers and open start their own businesses? Did he do that? If so, then we wouldn't have a lot of black men selling drugs because they would have like their own um plumbing company where they change toilets in urban communities because they're so horrible. Things like that. And they get paid for doing it. What I'm trying to figure out what was the problem in this boomer generation where they didn't make those moves. And then all these fucking people uh, you know splattered out all over the place. What the hell? What's wrong with the five percenters? Yeah, we know they started the little lunch program, but uh, why should always got to be volunteering? You know what I'm saying? They started the lunch program and breakfast program. But what about, again, I ask you, Huey Newton, why didn't you tell people to fill out EIN numbers to get fucking jobs? Huey Newton is, uh, is, a, is an intelligent ass dude. Why didn't right. you tell them? All these people are our people. I'm trying to figure out. But yet you're still protesting. What are you protesting for, Martin Luther King? Your protest what was this whole protest for? Was it for equal protection and shit like that? Or civil rights? All right. What about jobs? But uh I understand you want jobs. You're telling the same people that you look at as devils and demons, you're calling them jobs. And then you gotta turn around, okay, now go and fill out an application for them same people. Why didn't you just say, look, we're going to start plumbing company, all brothers that want to do plumbing companies, come on, let's sit down and fill out these forms so we can get our LLC numbers and start businesses. What the fuck was the problem? That's my question. And this early in the process, I can't believe I've been on an hour and 14 minutes. But this early in the process, I'm going to put the link in the chat. Should I let people up to dialogue with? Don't come up here giving no black man excuses because you will get checked at the door today. And I'm not playing. And do you're not coming up here to share no screens. I don't want to see no pictures and, or I don't want to see shit. I just want to hear. We're dialoguing today. I'm not sharing screens. All right. I'm put the link in the chat and give people. I, I, I want to hear your opinion. I want to know what what the fuck was the problem. I, you know, I do want to give a slight excuse to Huey Newton. And I wasn't co uh, alive back then. <laughs> but right. I don't think he had enough time. I, he didn't have enough time. He right. was just he didn't. worried he was about... A kid. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't think that he had enough time. And maybe it could have went further. And that's the reason why they really obliterated uh, that particular group. And they weren't allowed to transition over like the NOI and all these other different groups. I mean, that group just got turned out. And um, so I'm just saying, I don't think he got a chance. Okay. Okay. Maybe somebody else will come up and tell me more. So I'm going to give them a minute to get up. The link is in the chat room. 
I I, I want to hear. If it's an excuse, I'm going to let you know that's some bullshit. I'll be right back, y'all. Yeah. Conscious. Maddie. All right, so far away I come from. I sit and wonder about the times that it made sense. But nowadays, I don't worry about what's past tense. My younger days, I used to hang around with mad friends. If we just fell out, I don't really know what happened. A lot of people come around and keep you stagnant. Distraction. So, yeah, don't show them no compassion. We was really out here grinding, really rapping. Stacking them Franklins, them Grants, and them Jacksons. Imagine if we would've never chased our passion. We probably would've never knew what happened. They was all just talk, we showed action Once they leave, don't you let them back in no. Just pack up all their stuff and send them packing I'm blacking on anybody thinking they could act up with me This vibe ain't for free Cause where I'm at in life, I'm only focused on me Know the self, know yourself, focus on your health They don't wanna help them, fuck it, do it by yourself Don't give them no excuse to put you on the shelf If it's me, myself, and I, then it's no one else Yeah Self love is the best love. best love. It's the people who always give that never get love. No. They ain't real enough to probably say they messed up. Just let it go and make the best of it. Yeah. Uh. Self love is the best love. It's the people who always give that never get love. They ain't real enough to probably say they messed up. Just let it go and make the best of it. Okay, so our our people, a lot of religions, uh. Why did this thing come down? Oh, it made me sick. A lot of a, a lot of our young brothers went into militant style religions and they were taught and instilled in their head hate. Hate was instilled in them. So you're telling them to go out and they, they got to go out and get jobs to the people that you're saying is the devil. There were hardly no black corporations in the 70s. They all came from the South to work in white corporations. Factories. Then they go to the prisons while they're in prison and they learn that the white man's the devil, the blue-eyed beast and all this other stuff through the nation of Islam who has control over the lives of so many thousands of our people. The five percenters, the Sunni Muslims, all these hate groups And nobody had enough fucking sense to sit young men down and help them get EIN numbers to start their own businesses. Because you know, once you have a felony, you're not getting a job no fucking where. So you prepared them to respect each other in the nation of Islam, but you didn't prepare them to work and find their own jobs because they have to be on the street saying that the white man's the devil, but you didn't prepare them. Why was there? But you marched behind Martin Luther King with signs saying jobs, jobs, job. Martin Luther King went to the best college. He went to Spelman, I think, or something like that. Why didn't he sit people down in groups and say, fill out these EIN numbers. We're going to train you to be electricians or we're going to train you to be a plumber or we're going to train you to do carpentry work. What was the problem there? Y'all got it. Good evening, Sister Bethany. Isness, it's good to see both y'all. Good evening. Good evening. So would it be safe, safe to say, Sister Bethany, that one thing that I've, after listening to you and Isness in the beginning of this, wouldn't it be fair to say that Religion is the fanning of flames of hate and not a solution.
it's not a solution. I don't know if it's fanning the, the flames of hate, but I know it's not a solution. The reason it's I not, say hate, I'm sorry, instance, go ahead. No, no, I'm listening. The reason Christianity I say, doesn't teach hate. It teaches love, turn the cheek, love thy neighbor, love thy enemy. I so, understand. But by the time it got to the Hebrews, it, they found a whole different interp interpretation. But go ahead, y'all got it. But then turn around and look at the interpretation of Islam. That's another book. That's not even the Bible. Um, the Islam is the Quran, correct? If I'm not mistaken. Yes, ma'am. I'm just looking right. at the face of the people that's doing. I'm just following dialogue of what you said, because like like with Jesse Jackson, and his his own and his own account, he's worth ten million, and that's through politics, and what is that called? Um, civil rights he owned no businesses he had all 501 c3s that's still not a, that's a charity organization um what is that called rainbow push coalition that was a charity organization he sucked the hell out of chicago dry on the east coast where it was set up at off of 67th street you know and lakeshore drive i mean that's all they got paid for was to like literally stoke the flames of division saying this is this how people this is how you've been getting treated let me show you it's a different method of of the treatment but they're still giving you the overall same message that's why i said it's like the fanning of flames of hate can i say that it's robbery <laughs> because the, the okay so i'm looking at first timothy 6 10 it says for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted coveted after, they have erred from their faith and pierced themselves through with through with many sorrows. Okay, so basically that's just saying the love of money is the root of all evil. That's what we've been told generation after generation after generation. But our churches have constantly and consistently taken our money. So basically, somebody was smart enough to realize they can siphon all of our money. After they then blew up our businesses, then they turned around and figured out how to siphon our money out through our pastors, through Jesse Jackson, through T.D. Jakes. And, you know, I, I really hate to say Farrakhan because I, I do, you know, I, I know he is helping folks, but I think they've been um, sucking us dry, sucking everybody dry. And that's why they're not going to tell you to go start your own business. And create your own wealth. Yes. Because Sister Bethy, when you said that, that hit home to me. Everywhere you go, no one, no one tells you, like you said, brother, just like I did, get you an EIN number. Go open up your own joint and make the money yourself. Stop depending on somebody to give you a job. Go make your lane. I'm like, well, I only ask... Because we're being in the 70s and holding up job signs, what I, I, I just can't not I, I'm, I'm kind of lost as to why they weren't opening their own businesses so they could hire their people. It's just like today. They learn trades in jail, but they don't come out and get an EIN number and pass their business cards around to people in their own community and say, hey, I could change your toilet. I know it makes that noise all the time when you flush it and it don't stop. I know how to fix it. And you you become, uh, the, the community becomes depending on you rather than to pay Roto Rooter $60 for coming out and then another $200 for putting a fucking knob on the toilet. I I don't understand. I, I'm confused here. Because those car fix it guys, you know the guy that could fix cars. That's a that's mechanic. a pretty good skill. Yeah, a mechanic. Yeah. That's a pretty good skill. So, like, you're, you're, there should have been more mechanics out there. You know, more more businesses out there. A lot of men in the South know how to fix cars when they be like. 
five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10, 11, 12 years old because when they're little, Southern men kept their little boys with them and their boys just sit there and watch them. For so many years, they watched their dad and they know how to do it. And um, they can easily start businesses with fixing cars. And also, a lot of women can cook. They don't open up restaurants no more. There's so many few soul food restaurants around. And now it's this, it's this big thing for vegan food. I, for the life of me, don't understand why we don't have, we'd be on YouTube teaching about uh, eating healthy and eating the right foods. Well, it would be nice for our people to open up restaurants and have those things available for us to buy before we go to work, like smoothies. The smoothie shop. How come we ain't got no Negro smoothie shops? That requires work. We, we, we sit home. Well, you, you, you got your own garden in the South. You're growing fruits and vegetables. So you contract with your people in the South. Hey, I need these vegetables, another stock of them, so I can make smoothies. We're not doing business with each other. I'm trying to figure out what was going on in this time with these educated people. What, where did their mindset go when it comes to catering in our own community? Where, where did it go? All these restaurants in our community are owned by foreigners. You got Chinese people now cooking soul food and fucking the golden uh, corral. They're cooking collard greens, grits, bacon, but we're not doing that shit. I I'm like, this is crazy. All these restaurants, all right, all the women in our community, they know how to cook. They're owned by people from the Caribbeans or Chinese people. But the mainland Negroes, what, what, what the fuck is up? That's what I'm asking. Well, I, I do want to say that the reason why you do see the Chinese or the Caribbean is because foreigners get uh, money to start businesses. Because like you're saying, you know, you might not be able to go out there straight away and go get yourself a job. So these people are just giving money to create their own businesses. Y'all don't know English. Here's $20,000 you know, and go find yourself a franchise to open up or something like that. And, and so that's where those, that's why you're seeing the Chinese and the Caribbean. But like you're saying, we don't even have to go that far because we grew up with the candy house or, you know, big mama's house. And we know that we don't even need a storefront that we can create these, um, these restaurants and, and, and eventually, and then, you know, there's that dude that got it like that. How come he can't fund you know, big mama to get her own restaurant. But uh, hold up, I, let me let me back you up a little bit, give you a little reality check. Okay. <laughs> they do give, will give our people funds to start their own businesses. I saw that shit. I see the money being cut. These motherfuckers go buy cars and never start the business. Girls well, that have I, hair shops, they go get the girls that got hair shops, they go get little uh grants and shit. Them broads buy outfits to go to the club and they give niggas money so they could get a bunch of bags of weed to sell, and then they'll get a little shop on the corner. <coughs> a, 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 a lot. <laughs> That's a lie. When they when 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 they tell you brothers can't get no money from the government to start their business, even if they have a felony, I see it, and I can't say shit. Well, so I had I had I had a medical business, and it was viable. So I had business already. And I went to the bank and could not get any funding. 
Then I tried to go and get one of these government loans that um, was one of these diversity loans for quote unquote black women and people of color. Uh-huh. And I couldn't get I couldn't get a dollar. And what I already had denial, this. So it wasn't, what was the di- denial reason? They were acting like they couldn't understand. Now, there's multinational international companies with the same business that I had. Because I eventually had to close my business down and go work for one of them. They were like, you know, we don't know. We don't. Un-. They were acting like they didn't know what I was talking about, actually. Even though I wrote everything up and, you know, I had a business plan and I had everything. Basically, they were everyone acted like they just couldn't understand. Wait a minute. So they sent you a letter and the letter said, it, how did they? No, it was verbal. You? What? Verbally. Girl. They gave you a verbal decision. Yeah. One guy, he played around with me. Rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. He had me rewrite some stuff a thousand times. And then by the time I rewrote it a few times and he was, he said he couldn't. And so when we were sitting in his office, I'm like, well, it's really funny because, you know, we know some people who just came to the country and they got themselves a little restaurant from Vietnam. And he said, well, it's different because that person probably knows somebody that could put their house down as a, um, a down payment. And we know that's not true. But wait a minute, when you're going to get so he's government tell- funding or from the better, um, what, what is it, the um, business owners? I went to the small, women, small women, business small administration. Business owners, yeah. SBA. Small, the SBA. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they gave you a verbal decision. They didn't put nothing in writing. Yes. And he said and, the reason okay. why foreigners they gave you get a verbal money. De- wait, they gave you a verbal decision, right? Yes. They ain't putting nothing in writing. But your next move wasn't to take the ass to court and sue them for discrimination, for a verbal no. denial. No, because I, I, at that time, I was still in business and I'm trying to work my company. Now, now it's gone, but at that time, I'm just trying to keep up with my workload. And in the meantime, you know, I know that I'm growing and I need, you know, to grow a little bit more or to get a little bit more things so I can um, sustain all of this. And uh, he was just like. So everybody that's been denied, especially our men. Y'all are supposed to and, and they give you verbal decisions. They didn't give you nothing in writing. You're supposed to go to file a lawsuit. They're not supposed to give you verbal decisions. That's the SBA. They they gotta give you something in writing. Yeah. They have to. That's and then you gotta go sue them. Law. Then you gotta go sue them because you have proof of foreigners coming in here opening businesses in the community. You can't open no, well, a they business said in the community. That he, he, you, can't, you can't open a business in the community until you go through town council. And the state building inspector and the department of health, and you got to go through all that before you can open the business. So you have proof of he told the me amount of that the foreigner. He told me that the foreigner was able to get business loan because they had uh, collateral through a house, and I'm like, I know all these people that just come up here don't have a house to put down as collateral, so. Um, so that's what he told me, like verbally, <laughs> not in writing. Exactly. There's a reason why I don't tell you in writing. I I, I challenge y'all to go to them again, get the verbal denial, and then drag their ass in court. And but before you do that, you go in this your community and pick out all the foreign businesses in your community that's doing the same thing. Go pick out, get a list of all the foreign businesses in your community, and don't leave out the ones that recently opened up. 
I'm not talking about the chains. I'm talking about the little mom and pop stores. Because the chains obviously got money because they got chains of stores. And file lawsuits. You got to take them to court. But no one's telling our people that. You are never supposed to get a verbal decision. That's crazy. That sounds like real crazy to me right now. There's and the thing is, of- is, if someone says that they told me it was a new startup, I even tried to get loans off of that, tried to get startup capital, couldn't get that. But we also know that venture capitalists are giving these people millions of dollars in startup money. But this particular business was not a startup because I have been in business for a while. I just was trying to, you know, keep it moving. <laughs> and they told me no. The Small Business Association will give small loans, medium size, and all. I mean, like, if you when you write down that, you know, you need tools, whole tools, say like you're a plumber. You got to write down all the tools you need. Then you got to write down, you want to make a uniform for yourself. You, you write down everything you need. All the tools you need as a plumber. And they will give you loans to buy those tools. Also list and they the will give you money. You have. Also list the tools you have. That makes it a lot better. You also write down that you would like to purchase a thousand business cards so you can pass them out. That's that sounds real crazy to me. That's that's crazy, man. Doesn't but you know, I'm like in California. It, it sounds like yeah. it goes back, Sister Bethy. Back to Jesse. But you Jackson still can file a lawsuit. Wow. Oh my goodness. But 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 like you're saying, I did um I was able to start my business and get into business. So you're right. Um, you can go, you know, I'm not discouraging anybody from buying and you're right. You do need a little bit of business cards, tools, and you can get going and you can use your community to keep yourself afloat. So like you're saying, um, becoming plumbers, all it, you know how to be a plumber. You don't work a few years. Now they don't laid you off or whatever. Then go just start your own business or even janitorial. Right, uh, handyman, handyman, handyman license. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> handyman license. You start all kinds of businesses. You're gonna, you can, you, you, you start a security guard business. All kinds of businesses. That's why I'm like shot. And also, you, you can put down that you need. Say, like you wanted a business where. You go and give people jump starts to their car, like like a AAA service. But that would be, you would be a um, contractor. You can contract those jobs, and they will. You tell them that you need what type of equipment you need to start cars, so that you can go and be on emergency call for people that need jump starts in the winter, spring, summer, and fall. And if that's the case, you also want to put down you want a car. You want to purchase a reliable car where you could go and drive to these places to give emergency services. Also, not that, um, not only that, they have it where you could, um, there's so much creativity you can do. And our people, I, you want to get to denial so you can file lawsuits. Because right now, foreigners are getting all these jobs. You know, landscaping, like if you, want to be somebody that cut grass, you can put down that you need that machine and jumpstart you. It'll jumpstart you for six months. But then that's when you're out there um, selling your business as a landscaper, cutting people's grass. You make contracts with them, individual private people, and they say, okay, can you come twice a month? So you got, you're getting like, 
you want at least 50 customers where you go twice a month, that'll keep you busy. And those customers' payments to you will pay your bills. I, I'm, I'm not understanding. I, I guess maybe I'm just too naive or uh, I don't know. Are, are, do our people even have trades? I know dudes that don't even know how to change doorknobs. But my sister come in here and change that shit in two seconds. I'm talking in the north. They can't paint. It, it, it's terrible. And I just don't understand why Jesse and I'm, I, I'm, I'm just lost with the boomer generation. Not helping them start their own businesses. Wasn't the indoctrination really strong though? I mean, thinking about how all of that at that time went down, it was the 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 whole system of us have been has shifted and supported something that had nothing to do with us. So I can see why these people did what they did at that time but that's some snake stuff i'm sorry i'm like I, I, and i love malcolm x but why would you teach your congregation in open public that the white man's the devil but you know these same brothers gotta go to their companies and get jobs so now the whole world see like Man, I ain't one of them dudes. They might air us out. It's a hard pill to swallow. They they was teaching in their own way, but the way that they was teaching was through, once again, religion. You know, I, I feel like that was the dy dynamics of all of this was religion. I don't care if it's Christianity, Islam, or 3%, 5%, 1%. It's a whole bunch of different factions to everything. But the whole thing, it seems like it was not made to make you an upright person. It just wasn't. They're not created to empower you. At Righteousness. all. Righteousness. They're, they're just created to, to, uh, to help you cope. But they know how to feel. They know and how to feel like the paperwork to start their church. Huh? Right. <laughs> You're right. They knew how to paper fill out the paperwork to start their church. Or did they? Or did they get walked into that? Just simple questions. I, I want I want to know too. Because I want to know how did Jesse Jackson do Chicago so bad and none of the black folks seen it? I don't I cannot understand that. I just can't. And you know what? Jesse Jackson came up here to um, San Francisco and he was talking about the digital divide. And you're right. So he was saying that, you know, people need to get, you know, the churches need to become more involved. You're breaking up. You're breaking up. You're breaking up bad, real bad. I we ain't hear nothing you said. Now that's better. Okay. Okay, so Jesse Jackson came up here and he was talking about the digital divide. And he was talking about how the churches could facilitate bringing the community into um, be becoming more digitally intelligent, basically so they can go to these tech companies who refuse to hire us so we can get the job. Because the tech companies say we you, you break up. You broke up. You, you broke up. Salim, I can't see your face. Um, you broke up in your last sentence. Okay. Okay. So the tech companies were saying that our community was okay. not smart enough to get hired, right? And so they had to go to India and China to hire people. So when Jesse Jackson came, he, he didn't tell us, once you get these, um, you get your 
C plus certificate or whatever you're going to do to open your own business. If they don't want to hire you, open your own businesses. So you're right. He was only telling us to go into um, and get digitally certified to work for another company who still don't hire us to this day. All of my coins, I would love for you to step to the piano because I want to hear, I want to educate myself. I, I, I am born and raised in the North. Um, but in the North, I'm always, I was always taught that the folks in the South always had businesses, always. And it's nothing for them to, that's why when people from the South come to the North, it's easy for them to get jobs here. Because <laughs> they already have the skill. Um, I, down South, I don't understand why so many of the Negro restaurants closed. I don't understand that. So throughout time, it might have been one person's idea to do the business. Now, keeping the family in that business is a whole nother subject. Most most mom and pop shops decrease once the person that or let's just say the mom and pop that came up with it, their kids want nothing to do with it. OK, that that happened a lot here in the north. Yep. And, you know, my father owns his own business. And he said that when he would try to hire us to work, it was like they didn't want to do it. And he was like, it's really sad. Um, you know, he would try to hire cousins and all these different people to work the business and, um, you know, as employees and nobody he said people are more willing to work for someone else than work for one of us. I don't know. If you that's know true. why that is though, right? Isn't it? Why? To be totally honest, it's because you came up with the idea and now you want me to work for you. It's, it's taught hate. They don't want to, they don't hate doing the work. They hate doing the work for you. Even your own people. Right. That's who I'm talking about. Your own people. They hate doing the work for you, not for someone else. Wow. Wow. This is mind boggling to me. I'm trying to figure out what was it in the 70s that they needed other than EIN numbers to start businesses when there's so many thousands of them. None of the leaders said, all right, we're going to have this money pool for helping our people open in their own businesses. Did anybody even think about that? Y'all can hear me? Now we can, yeah. Oh, my bad. You got it. So, hey, are you talking about post segregation or pre segregation? Integration, integration. My bad. I'm talking in the 70s. So, so that's after integration or before? Or like during? Because uh, during the time when Martin Luther King is trying to get everybody to integrate, we already had all our stuff. What really messed us up the most was integration. Because once we integrated, we left all our stuff. Then we merged with them. Then that's when the begging them for jobs and stuff started coming about. All but before I mean, then, really, we had our I, I, own everything. I'm confused about And, and you wouldn't need an EIN like that. I mean, you could get an EIN. Mm -hmm. Some people had them, but I'm saying we had... A lot of skills. Well, I'm from South Carolina, from Charleston. So, like, a lot of people down here, like, if you talk about somebody, grandfathers, uh, great grandfathers, all of them had multiple trades and multiple skills. 
and just different things they could do. Right, I know that. But what you just I what you just said was interesting. You said Martin Luther King was talking about the emigrating. So you left. So you mean to tell me that I, I, is this fair? What you're saying that they just dropped any business they had in the South and went north? No. Why would not necessarily? Well, well, you gotta understand we have, that they will pass laws. To, to, to keep you out or to, to, to put you a step back. And, and, and then they start like doing like stop and frisk and, and, and you know what I'm saying? Just doing those things to mess us up. No, I'm talking about like down here, we got the. Uh, I'm talking about with your yeah. business. The people that had the businesses in the South, because I know they had businesses in the South. What? Uh, uh, I, I'm talking after. After um, Tulsa, o- Tulsa, Oklahoma bombing in the seventies, I know the South had a lot of businesses. What made them stop? And it wasn't just farming; they literally had businesses. They was making soap and all kinds of stuff. I'm trying to figure out what was it that dismantled their business. Anybody got an idea? Overall, um, that was, and any other things that's dealing with our community, it was done through hatred and inter, and um, God, what is the word I'm looking for? Infiltration. They couldn't allow you to prosper. They had to keep putting you down and making you understand where you your place in society will be. And Sister Bethy, to take it a step further with owning your own business, you can even go get you a sole proprietor license. Right. right. It's too easy. Well, that's your EIN, right? And so when you fill out your EIN, you can say, I want to be the sole proprietor, which is basically free. And then if you want to pay a little bit more to get your LLC, but if you only have a few bucks, just get your EIN. Just start off with your EIN and say you're a sole proprietor. And that's free. All you'd be required is to pay for the business license itself, which is yeah. usually dependent on what county or how your state does it. Like here, why um the business license is fifty bucks for a year. You think you're not gonna make that fifty back? Did that same what you're telling me from right now about sole proprietorship? Was that the same thing deal back in this day, back in the seventies? <laughs> no, ma'am. Those 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 were represented five hundred one c three. That man right there, God. No, 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 no. Right, go ahead. I'm talking about instead of the guys that's holding this d- the sign for jobs, and how easy you said it is to get start your own proprietorship. Was that opportunity available for these men holding the signs for jobs? Now, with them being a follower instead of a leader. Okay. But, again, I'm asked the question. Was that opportunity there for them to fill out EIN numbers to start their own proprietor- so proprietorships? Or yes, no? ma'am. Because in Chicago, okay. we had a lot of mom-and-pop mechanics, plumbers, painters, electricians, everything. We even okay. at one point had a steel mill. U.S. Steel was in Chicago on the south side. Okay. So that opportunity was there was present. For, them was open present. Up their, for them to open up their own businesses. But Jesse Jackson had them following with signs to get jobs instead of them opening their own businesses. Is, would that be correct to say? Yes, ma'am. By 1,000%. I mean, way over a thousand percent. So, this definitely because his job was just to rally the people into what I mean to tearing down (laughs) ignorance. I'm I'm sorry. I I, I want to be very honest. That's generally what it is because you're you're taking your time out of your day to go and build your family. 
to support something you have no idea about. You don't know where it's going. You don't know what it's about. You don't know what it's going to do. And eventually, what did it do? It helped that man in that picture become as rich as he did. Nothing for the community. So everything he did was a sham. So everybody out there that's marching, holding signs, had opportunity to start businesses, but they chose not to. Are you saying they chose not to start their own businesses? Yeah. A lot it of them probably did. didn't even come to their a mind. Lot them <laughs> a lot of them were so, just going off of motion. So a lot of them weren't aware or, or had the capacity to think to start their own businesses instead of going to apply for like a plumber's job or electrician job or a um, garbage man job or instead of starting their own they chose not to and said, let's go fight for jobs. What if I I'm told on the you border. 75 on the border with that. people in that picture was probably already employed? 75% of them people in that picture were already <laughs> employed. Okay. Well, Salim, I'm you on said you're on the border. Okay, go. Yeah, because I get what you're saying. You, you, you're you trying to figure out how come all these, like, like where all these ghost towns come from, like, what actually happened? Like, okay, you got Tulsa, Oklahoma. That, that was all over, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, down here, like, Raleigh, North Carolina, they said that was bigger than Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then Charleston, South Carolina, where I'm at, uh, <sighs> But well, yeah, you're talking in the twenties. You're talking in the twenties. I'm talking. No, no. You talking? You talking? Yeah, I'm saying these these cities used to be booming. Like like our city, our city used to be all black people. I already know South Carolina is is uh, is fully black, but I'm asking. This is like I'm talking the city part though. Like now it's all white people. And what they would do sometimes is they'll be like, oh, it's a, um, it's all, all, okay, like, so, like, we sitting on the water, right? So they'll say, um, it's, um, it's like a hazard, the ground sinking, all of that to get everybody to leave, and then, then they just come take it over. It's like, they, they, so they where, maneuver. All right, hold up, hold up, you went too fast. They getting everybody to leave. Okay, so where did they go if they got them to leave? Out their own homes. Where did they go? Well, different, different parts. Or how did they? How did the, they get them to leave? Different parts of the city. Yeah, yeah, they was locking. Remember, remember, I said they was locking people up for petty stuff too. And how long was they doing time? They've they been doing that forever. Yeah. So how, how much time? Like in the seventies, they locked them up for petty stuff. Like what? Uh, Give me some okay, examples. Well, Anything like being black, <laughs> depending on where you at. Come on, come on, man. What were the reasons for them being arrested? What is it? Give me an example of because I know if I go look up a police record, it's not going to say this guy was black, so we arrested him. What were they being arrested for? What were they doing? What happened? Being entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being black, Selling. being black entrepreneur. You gotta understand back then the police and stuff is straight KKK niggas. Like it ain't like now. Get it? But you you're not love, giving really. me. No, you're not giving me ex an example of them being arrested. Okay, I get it that they're being arrested, but arrested and 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 sentenced to jail. Can you give me an example of what they were arrested for and what they were sentenced to jail for? Mm, weed, weed no, arrest, yeah. selling no, weed. No, in the seventies, we're talking the seventies. No. Vagrancy, vagrancy. Not having license, not having not a having license. an ID. Vagrancy, not having a license to sell what you're selling. Oh, no. okay. So, no, all just right. not having oh. an ID. Period. Vagrancy. Okay, he said. I'm. I'm asking him. He's saying not having a license to sell. So you're saying that, say, like they were in South Carolina, they didn't go to the Department of um, uh, Consumer Protection and fill out a um, 
craft for craft license or a handyman license. They didn't do that. They just started doing business and didn't have no tax number. Now that brings me this thought to me. I'm on the border. I'm on the border. Well, it's just giving me a thought. You're saying they didn't have a license to sell what they're selling. So I'm wondering if it's because they weren't citizens and they didn't need a fucking license to sell something because they're Indians and they are not in U.S. Yeah. status. It, 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 it's like right now, the little boys down here sell flowers, right? And they tried to make the young boys get licensed to sell flowers. And sweet grass baskets and all of that. I don't know if y'all familiar with that. It's like they they try to license everything. They everything they could do to get you to stop being entrepreneur. They did. I know you want some specifics. So, I got to think so start, because you so, got a good so, question. So not getting um a license to sell flowers got them arrested. Yeah. And I, I I'm trying to figure out what was. It, what was the deal that they, that they didn't go get licensed? Is it because they were not citizens and they were still living in their Aboriginal American Indian status in the South where they didn't have shit to do with the local municipalities? I mean, it's, it's a not lot of really our people did live, at that A lot of our people life. did live on unincorporated land, unincorporated land in the South. They did. Like it, it's not really the norm, like to go get the license in the EIN, like it is now. It, it wasn't the norm, man. You just do your okay, thing. Okay, now you're talking. Now you're and talking. That, and that's what, the, what we do now. We tell them, yo, hey, this our land. We've been here. Y'all can't now, stop us. But now but you're we talking. Also get infiltrated. They infiltrated heavy. Okay, so no, now you're talking. So that means that they weren't citizens. That they were still living the life that they've been living before, um, before and, and not assimilated. They were still living the Confederate mindset in the South because the South was not like the North. They they had their own businesses, they did their own shit, and. Even though the Constitution said they're citizens, they didn't even pay that no mind because they don't they didn't sign nothing to be a citizen and they continue business as usual. Is yeah. that is it fair to say that they yes, continue definitely business as usual? Happens. And next thing they know, they're getting arrested because they had no knowledge that they needed to get a license to start doing selling the things mm -hmm. that they can sell it. Can, can, I, now, can also, I say something? What one yeah. thing, one thing. Also when you do in these applications at that time. Once you say that you black, you probably won't even get it. No, I'm talking about the people that had their own business. You would do. You just said they was doing their own thing. They were selling flowers out of pie or whatever, mm -hmm. and they got in trouble for that. So that to me sounds like they imposed state law on them after they already had a business that they were doing prior to the municipality or town having jurisdiction over them. That I have, I have, I have what you would call moonshiners in my family background, right? And so- What's, what's that? I, what is moonshiners? We got moonshine down here. Yeah, where people who created their own alcohol, right? Oh, and so, oh, oh, okay. Whatever you would call that, right? So I'm, as I'm doing my genealogy, I found in the 1800s where a grandfather was um, stopped and given a citation on Indian territory um, for delivering um, spirits on Indian territory. Liquor. So Correct. what liquor? Yes. So that would be a discouragement from owning your own business. <laughs> It, it, because somebody has come now come along and told you that um, this thing is now illegal and you can't sell it. And so the people, you know, were doing their own thing and sold it anyway. And so when he went to go deliver it to wherever he did, he got in trouble for it. 
and I don't know if it's a jail thing or a ticket. So they weren't allowed it was. It was to do business. They weren't allowed to do business with the plain Indians. Is that what it, I don't know. He just well, was I, on, I know uh, that in certain uh, towns in the south, I think Arkansas, you couldn't sell liquor to Indians Arkansas. after 6 p.m. It was something wow. like that. He, he he asked spirited liquor. So Sister Bethy, what she what she's analogizing and what she's saying is, and I understand what you're saying, business. Um, in actuality, mm -hmm. you cannot you cannot transport grain alcohol without a license so the reason that he was being stalked is because he had whole grain alcohol oh shit yeah just like oh so this is something they imposed they was on him when he was already selling it before they imposed him being a citizen and he you know they just imposed laws on him that they weren't aware of you can't yeah because this is around government. the time that the Indian Bureau of Pharaohs is coming up. Yeah. The the, the, the Indian Bureau oh, wait a minute. Yeah. They're just now coming into play at this time because this is 18, I don't know, 60 or something like that. So this Bureau is when the, the United States is now getting involved. Wow. So but, but forget that era. I'm talking about hair. In the 70s. This is what I'm talking about. This time period. Where well, these are his children. Right? So he's been told. Having your own business. Is <clears throat> um, wrong. You know. I can get you in trouble. And then someone wrote in the chat. That we were encouraged to go to school. <laughs> you know right? To go get a degree. And so these are that man's children now. So now they've all been encouraged to go out and get a job. Don't work your farm. Go out and get a job. So Jesse Jackson should have been able to redirect them in the in the right way. So this Bethy, is the man's grandchildren, actually. That man, that man right there, not only was he just like completely wrong, not only that. It's just that the man literally got paid to segregate, to spread okay. the same hate. So I'm going to play like I'm dumb. I'm going to play. I'm going to give Jesse the benefit of the doubt that he's dumb. Jesse didn't know to. But Jesse and Martin Luther King. King uh, I'm, I'm talking about Jesse. Mm. I'm going to play dumb. All right, I throw both of them in there. So Jesse and Martin didn't have common sense or enough sense to tell the very men they're walking by holding signs for jobs to start LLCs. They didn't. They, they were no sellouts, though. They were sellouts. Give me an example of them being a sellout. Give me an example of them being a sellout. Because were they seriously, innocently, not understanding that the men that are holding the signs should um, start their own LLCs. Okay. Yeah. Be because I'm gonna answer okay. all of my coins questions. Let's 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 look at them versus Malcolm X. Who I'm is going to tell I you to stop your business and go integrate with white people? Why is it so important? That we integrate with these white people. Just imagine we in the hood chilling in the 70s and you come around telling us, listen, man, we need to go integrate with them white people over there. We need okay. to go ride their bus. Right. We need to go. go. All right. Let's say, yep, go integrate with white people. But still, there was nothing in his brain that says, oh, and by the way, I want y'all to start your own LLC, limited liability companies. That's and when, not part of the script. Okay. No. I, I got part of his Basically, so basically from what I'm seeing, from what y'all saying, of, you know, him telling them to integrate, all right, what that sounds like to me is, nope, don't tell them to start their own LLCs. We need these slaves. We need slaves. 
but they're just not saying they need slaves. But we need these people to work for us. We need slaves. But they did say they needed slaves, Sister Bethy, because you're begging <laughs> for more government. You're begging for more government, more education, more rights to get education, ed educated and indoctrinated. You're asking to be a slave. Basically. So them holding them signs, they're demanding servitude jobs. They're asking for jobs from the government. That's what they want. Right, right, right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I know. I'm just dialoguing. No, 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 no. I ain't going to say necessarily because I have not seen a clip of Martin Luther King talking about how they was giving the white people farmland and then denying us the farmland and then paying for them to go to school to learn the farm and stuff but denying us. Mm -mm. It's a lot of mix up, but it, them niggas... Dr. K played a big part in this whole thing. And still today, we is um, experiencing the uh, the results of the integration and everything. Because what really what really hurt the most was when they when we merged our school systems with their school systems. You know? I've been looking into some certain things, how they didn't want Indian people didn't want their kids going to school with white people and learning these white people stuff. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, they will go around the town just like they do now, the truancy people, and, and, and make sure that your kid was in school. And if not, they'll lock you up just like today. If your yeah, kid is not about in truancy. school. We had truancy here too. Those are truancy laws. All right. So, but that was going on back then too. See, they didn't have the power to do that before we integrated with them. But once we integrate with y'all now, more government. Now, if y'all don't come to school, we can lock your parents up. Okay, well that's that's cool. The parents make the kids go to school, but still, I'm talking about them going to work. Mama. Well, work, work wasn't really. I don't know. I don't know. Work was wasn't. Have ice cream. Like it was, like it is today. Like this is the seventies. I'm talking about them screaming for jobs, okay? And and and, and this sign up here that this guy wrote. All of my coins. Well, where is this at? Where is this at? Here, girl. Where else would Jesse Jackson be? I don't know. He could have been in Chicago. He could have uh -huh. been in New York. He could have been any damn where. Doesn't matter. They're holding signs for jobs instead of starting their own businesses. All right. And my question is, from all of my coins, what kind of business could be started with zero startup costs required? I wholeheartedly want to know. Okay. Let's say that you know how to unstop toilets with that stringer, all right? You go around in your neighbor, the way you do it, you're not coming from down south. You're going to leave all your tools down south that you've been working on, or you're going to come, go take your tools with you, and you people call you, and you come and unstop their toilets, change their toilet seats. Why do you need a startup cost? You have all the tools. Community can donate money and give you twos. You don't even have to go to the fucking small business bill. You need, you write down all the twos you need and your community knows that you're blackballed from getting any loans from banks, small business bills. But there's so many people in the community that all could chip in $5 and there's all your fucking twos until you get your first paycheck. Then you start buying twos that you need I, I'm there's many ways you could do it. It just seems to me that it's just more excuses at this point. But I, I I see a bunch of intelligent men holding signs. They don't look like a bunch of dumb people because they want jobs. So obviously they have skill traits if they want jobs. 
Exactly, Sister Betty. I couldn't have said it no better. Thank you so much for saying that. You know these these people were skilled. They wanted skilled jobs because they wanted to be employed by who? People with the money. Who did these people see who have the money? That's what I'm saying. It's just it's well, why, well why remember are you not telling folks. It, Remember, yeah, because remember I might have, I might have the experience. We're destroyed. Remember, our businesses were destroyed, right? So the established businesses right. are gone, and so the right. businesses that are established, like we were talking earlier, they get funding. So these shiny, spiffy businesses with uh, with tiny permit plans. Uh, were marketed towards the people instead of you doing for yourself and living off your own accord we have all been told that we need to go get a nice retirement and this is probably um really one of the first generations behind that is this civil rights generation that was told that mm. wow okay so it's I guess it's fair to say that the boomer generation is it fair to say this the boomer generation didn't have the opportunity to start their own business is that fair to say or is that false no that's false because my dad is a boomer and he was the one who said what you need to do is open up your own business. But he thought school was stupid. <laughs> he said, just go open up your own business. So everybody in the boomer generation wasn't that way. But um, but I do think it's the boomer generation. Everybody wasn't in the school and stuff like that. So like, most of them only had like five, six, seventh grade education. <clears throat> so that was a barrier. Mm. But um, to start your own business, I know a lot of people that don't have fifth grade, fourth grade education, but they able to start their own business. When you get the, the EIN number, doesn't ask you for your high school education. Mm -mm. It does not. Well, the only one that asks you for your high school education are employers because they make policies. It's a policies. Policies is what stop a lot of baby boomers from getting jobs in businesses because they didn't have high school diplomas. So I know that that was affecting. We saw that in good times. Every time James got happy, and then they said, "I don't have a high school diploma," and they was in the hoods, and you know they probably came from the south. So one factor I do know during boomer generation and um their life their employment life being in the gener generation x life they were denied due to not having high school diplomas but i i i don't know my father had his own barbershop in the 70s and he was a fireman. But did he go to barber school? He did. He did. Okay. He traveled. He traveled to Hartford and got his um, barber license. If I from, he's from Florida. My dad had a barber shop, and I, I I took over the barber shop that my dad 50, had. Fifty years. Fifty years. Died. And I had it like thirty years. Sister Bethy, well, would this really point back to the silent generation that raised the baby boomers generation to make them believe that they have to be non-communicable -communic or not even wanting? It was a selfish generation. The it, to me, it seems like the selfish gener the silent generation built the baby boomer generation to be and molded in such a way that certain ones that got that token. They became so selfish and cold-hearted towards their own. Or, or am I missing something? I think you're missing something, man. Oh, 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 only because what did your granddaddy do back in the days? 
Does your granddaddy had a job or he just did multiple things? Oh, my grandfather was, um, he owned three businesses and mm -hmm. all of those businesses got passed down to my dad and others. And, you know, like I said, and I said before, that's when the family does not support or want to be bothered with those businesses, sir. Right, right. Okay. So... I, I, and I, see and I, people. I do want to make a clarification. I, I want to, my father is not part of the baby boomer generation, according to this chart. He is part of the <laughs> silent generation. So I don't know what that yeah, means. My dad so was he did a, own a business. My so dad was the silent generation too. He was born in 1944. That's, that's my dad too. This is interesting. So the problem today, let, let's fast forward. We're in the alpha generation. Um, let, let's go in generation Z. A lot of people have felonies. A lot of our, our, our sons have felonies. And, but felons are not, um, felons can start their own, most of them here in the North start their own businesses, their own LLCs, because they know employers are not going to hire them. So, um, I know a lot of young brothers that did time in the 2000s a lot of them don't want to start their own businesses. And a lot of them tell the courts, I can't get a job. I'm a felon. I can't get a job nowhere. But when you tell, ask them to start their own businesses, they don't want to do that. And they don't have an excuse not to have money because they're hustlers. So I, I'm trying to figure out what, are they lacking trade? Like someone born in 1990. Are they lacking trade? Yeah. And the mindset to start a business. Reading yeah. comprehension. Reading, writing, comprehension. So lack of education. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know. Well, I'm I'm gonna say that ninety that ninety that late nineties and up. Like the youth of the day, they don't got it. They don't got that reading comprehension and all that there. <laughs> The youth of today, they do because they read and play games on the internet. So they're exposed to reading all the time. They're always Googling. Oh, I don't know. And there are jobs you can do with no startup costs. You can you can write. I've written online. You can um, these these newspapers or these uh, news agencies, uh, they'll hire you. You are a contractor. That is your own business. Um, there are different things that you can do. Social media marketing, that's your own company. Uh, that you could do for free with, with those startup costs. Uh, some of these guys are mechanics. They already have the tools. They've already got the tools because they fix their own cars and their family cars. That's, that's a zero startup cost. Uh, cooking food, you know, um, doing plates. You know, like she was saying, like there's a lot of people who want to eat healthy. You could start a business doing that with zero startup costs. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ride sharing. You can do ride sharing. You already got a car. That's another one with zero. So there. So to answer your question, Mister All of My Coins, there are a lot of business you can do with starting off with zero money. So is it fair to say that 
our people just don't want to work and they never wanted their own businesses. When they had opportunity, they didn't go for it. Like a lot of boomers. Sound like a lot of entitlement. Sound like a lot um, of when entitlement. You work, when you write... When you write for someone, um, that is not working for someone. Of course, when we own our own business, we are doing bus business with other people. We are um, basically hiring ourselves out for service, no matter what business we got, right? So that's kind of silly to say I'm working for someone if I write for <laughs> someone. But if I do lend my, my writing abilities out, and if somebody comes to my business and says, hey, can you write me an article or three um, and I'll pay you, that's my business. I'm, I'm, I'm writing for somebody. So Services I'm not I'm good. not working. Yeah, I'm not working for the news agency. The news agency is asking me to write for them and they'll pay me. Gotcha. And you could do that. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 You can. All right. Let's jump to these guys. Prime example. So let's let let's just be. I, I'm just gonna say this, and and everybody in that line probably is not a convicted felon. Nope. Let let let's say that everybody in this Hebrew Israelite line is not a convicted felon. They need a job. You, uh, um, do you think that they lack trade and won't start their own business, or do they just um use the race card and say they're not gonna hire me because I'm black, I have dreads, and I'm just gonna stay home and not get a job and let my girl work and I'll stay home and watch the kids. What what are you what are you what are your thoughts on that? To be honest, looking at this picture, don't you see the order of operations to who stands in the front and who stands in the back? That's the knowledge of the group and how the group is told. A bunch of followers. Okay, so it's religion that's a barrier for them to excel themselves in life because they teach that the white man is the devil. So their religion is their barrier from them getting economic. Mm just so many of them years and years of indoctrination make people do some of the ultimate craziest things not to say none of these brothers are not are bad i'm not saying that it's just that how someone see this was a hey bring your cousin bring this we need to do this in this kind of fashion type deal and none of these people actually knew what they were actually doing and just my humble opinion Photo op. Okay. You're jumping over in intent. Our Indian Wall Street businesses were deliberately destroyed by a proclamation, execution order, and policy. Shaking my head. Okay. You should unshake your head, sir, because that's one of the first things that we said happened to our community. We're talking many years later, like you're talking 1921. We're talking 1970s. What is the excuse now? That what you have up here, New Growth, we already discussed that in like almost three hours ago in the show. We know that that was a factor back in the 1920s. But now we're, we're, we're in another era. In the 70s, what 
stop them from reestablishing those businesses? Was it the fact that did, did they believe that they were going to be destroyed uh, again, like Black Wall Street, if they started their own businesses? Or I, I, that's the question I have. 1921. Okay. We're talking 54 years later. The knocking down of our businesses happened in 1921. This is 1975, what we're looking at up here. Look at the afros and the, the shaved um, side beards shape-ups. We're talking 54 years later. Were our people afraid that if they started their own businesses after from four, 54 years ago, were they scared they were going to be burned down again? That's the question I have for you, New Growth. Or were they just directed by a leader to protest for jobs in the white man's businesses? that are already established. That's the question I have for you, sir. Sister Betty, wouldn't it still point out to how and through the timeline that you've concurrently displayed of the follow mentality instead of the leader mentality? Everybody's looking for this Messiah instead of being a messiah and doing for themselves and their family. Good. Does anybody want to hit the link and respond to that? I'm going to drop the link in the chat. You're certainly welcome to come on the panel and respond to Straight Smoke's um, statement. New growth, you can certainly hit the um link. New growth of the trenches, original builders. If you would like to come up and respond or or elaborate a bit more. Are all of my points. That would be very helpful. It's kind of hard from the chat, brother. Now, News Growth did say something that was pretty good. He said that um, those people that you're showing could have been, some of them could have been crisis actors. And we do know that that does happen um, in a lot of these, <clears throat> these movements where a lot of people are hired to go help these people protest or coerce or, you know, um, they're hired to look like there's a movement bigger than what it is to get an agenda done. So, so you know, how do we not? That's a so good point, right there. Yeah. You think That's that a good point, because nice they've been this. doing that. They've been doing that. And I don't know, I wasn't there, but, you know, maybe some of those people were hired to go out there and push jobs. And, you know, we need more jobs. Instead of telling people to go start your own businesses. Come on, you guys need to go get jobs. We need uh, affirmative action. We need um, to get into these boardrooms and all this other type of stuff. And uh, how do you not know that there weren't people who were hired to help the rest of us come into line with that, that thought? So, Isness, we have to dive we back know to the same thing. We will have to dive back into the same thing. I believe 75% of those people on that picture was employed. Well, I would have to agree with you that they were employed because they had nice shape-ups. Yes. There we go. But then that almost brings me to here. Are these crisis actors? Or are they just some dirty 
uh, wild extremist people. Well, that's Let's a just look at that, that light skin one in the front. That light skin one in the front. Well, we know they were infiltrated by the CIA. That they got CIA members in there, and you just don't know who they are. Hmm. We never recovered from the crack epidemic, enslavement, disenfranchising gangs, poverty, violence, the KKK. Okay, the crack epidemic. Um, epidemic, I can say, yes, that that's an issue, but not everybody was a crackhead. All everything else that you're mentioning, other than the gangs, there's no excuse because none of them, the people, were born. But what if your customers was crackheads and that messed up business? Huh. What if a lot of the customers was crackheads and that messed up businesses? Uh, I, I, I could, I could, I can't even, I can't even. Crack messed up a lot of businesses because crackheads aren't the only ones that are come, gonna come and get your tires changed. If you have a a, a mechanic business, if you have a mechanic business, a crackhead is not gonna even come to you. They're gonna go get their crack. Yeah, but what about when that, that person don't got the money to pay no more because they're so strung out on crack? What if they're not strung out on crack? You're telling me all your customers were crackheads? Yeah. Not with crackheads, but got on crack. Like, hmm. that, again, the are you saying all your customers was... were crackheads? <laughs> are you saying all your customers, all your customers? were crackheads and the reason why you lost your 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 entrepreneur business is because everybody turned into a crackhead. I wanna say that. I don't I don't feel that we dropped the ball with all our businesses like that though. I don't think so either. I think all my coins are I think we always had businesses. He's talking about stuff. times when he's talking about fifty four years ago, uh, except for the crack epidemic. 54 years, the crack and the gangs. Everything else was 54 years ago. I think we had businesses and stuff throughout this whole thing. Like strong stuff too, but that's just, that the light wasn't put on that part. Right. You know, we have to look into the black millionaires and stuff uh, in the 70s. You know what I'm saying? We have to do like a comparative analysis to really balance out this, and as far this, as poverty, perspective. as far as poverty, our people that receive Section 8 and food stamps are living better than a lot of us that have working incomes and we don't qualify yeah. for those benefits. So that's that's cap, right? That, that's not cap. A lot of people on Section 8 live is living way better than people that have to worry about paying rent. If you only got to pay like $35 a month for rent, you won't ever have to worry about not having an apartment. Whereas somebody that's paying $1,500 a month for their rent, plus all their other bills. And don't forget, you being in poverty, oh, okay. you not only get Section 8, got one. You, get, you get light bills that is it, it, because you that's a, they probably they raised the rent. That. They raised the rent. They got they no raised rent. The rent on those businesses. Your rent is like thirty five dollars. Your light bill, you you don't even fucking hardly get a light bill because energy assistance pay for your lights. You get uh, over a thousand dollars in food stamps. You live in mu much more better than a lot of people that's working. But check this out. Around that time, they raised the rents on those businesses. Yep, they did. They raised rent, the landlords. So, and they so, went up so more, that, or they went up more taxes. Major. Or they that's went up more taxes. Taxes and rent. Because he was like, stop. Somewhat back in the days for my industry, like barbering. The barber used to own the building. If you look at today, you you rarely find barbershop where the barber actually owned the business. 
Okay. So let me ask you this. Do you oh, think no, that... The, the, the worksmen, the woodsmen, the, the whoever, it, it start getting harder to own your shop. And from that, uh, you breaking up. So yeah, is it stuff up. fair to say that these groups, this one, this one, these groups that I'm highlighting, this one, this one, this, that's Farrakhan, that's Malcolm X, that's the Hebrew Israelites, that's the Moors, that's the five percenters. And there's Huey. Are you saying that these leaders destroyed the mindset of our people? That the, the, their mind destroyed the, our people's mindsets with their beliefs so bad that it's now difficult for them to um work and this society I mean when you're here the man's the devil the white man's the devil the white man's the devil white man's the devil white man's the devil white man's the devil you you're racing uh, you're racist towards me and you're not giving me a job you're racist uh, it, uh it's all the mindset with well, the mindsets of our people now i know the tragedies we went through but uh, when these these came along when these groups came along and uprise they make it worse for the mindset of our people Because we're looking outside of ourselves for a solution. And so instead of doing a whole bunch of focus on what they're doing over there, you know, maybe all this energy in hindsight, if we look at all this in hindsight, we could say, well, we should have just been focused on reestablish. Okay, they burnt down Black Wall Street. How do we reestablish it? You know, and how do we reestablish our, our, our centers and our family centers and stuff like that? Because everybody's not going to go and get a job at, uh, Goldman Sachs or whatever the heck you need the job for. So, you know, create your own businesses. And that that one little piece was completely destroyed or completely ignored. Yeah, that, that that's ignored? that's what I have to say because this is Oklahoma. This is 1921. Mm -hmm. So you're are you saying from that time are the minds of our people that was born in this, even though this happened in 1921, by the time we got to 1960 and 1970, this right here still stopped our people from getting jobs, even though they, the people in 1970s and 80s did, was not, did not live through this tragic tra uh, atrocity. It was an installment of fear, Sister Bethy. And to go back to what all of my coins said and, the, and what you put up, at the very end of it, it took a lot to get to this point. All of my coins, you're right. It took a lot of ignorance to get to this point. For you, for anyone not to want to not comply and do their own thing for their family, that is sheer ignorance asking the government or any other occupying entity to give you what you're asking for. That sounds crazy to me, Sister Bethy. So now you sound like Malcolm X. <laughs> okay, she said that, um, have I noticed that every picture that I pulled up, there was a white person in it so let me go back because i didn't notice that let's see i don't see any white people in here that's the uh black panthers there's white people with al sharpton in them al sharpton yes i mean yeah this is al al sharpton in here 
um, I don't see any white people with Jesse other than the news back. media. Back there's back, the one person back. right there in the, in, the, in the corner. Yeah. Yep. Back back right. Wait a minute. Let me get this right. You would call him Mexican, but U.S. classifies him as white. Where? Right here. Behind the sign. The sign that says the job sign. Right next to the job sign is a Hispanic face. Oh, he's not Hispanic. He doesn't look Who's Hispanic. He? he looks. He could be either Jewish Slavic. or he could be white. Yeah, Slavic okay. or something like that. All right. Well, he's white. <laughs> right. I agree. Right. Right. There's a white lady right here with the five percenters. Mm hmm. Infiltration. And there's, I don't know how many white people about here. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see. This looked like it might be a white guy with the tie on right here. There's a white lady yeah. way back there. White people all through here. All through it. With Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see any white people in here. I'm There's sorry. It's just, it's, in it's the front. Yes. I he's, see um, this guy right here, he's, um, oh, I forgot. he's Puerto Rican. Okay. He's Puerto Rican. <laughs> well, the United no. States. No, I know that. I know that to be true. He's Puerto Rican. White. He's Puerto Rican. Those, the U.S. classifies those persons as white. No, they don't. Puerto Ricans are not classified as white. Puerto Ricans are classified as Latino. That's a fact. That's why in applications it says, "Are you non spent non Hispanic Latino or or yeah yeah Hispanic yeah." Alaskan descent. And so when they ask, they ask you if, if you're Hispanic and they'll ask you or if you're white or if you're black. Now that man right, may right, not right. say he's black. So his other option is to say he's white. And when Correct. I worked for the government, they told us to classify specifically told us to classify them as white. Okay. I was told to classify them people as white. Okay. I don't see no white people in the moors. I mean, end of the day, we dropped the ball. We got it's infiltrated. We dropped there. the ball. Oh, you know it's going to be white people out there. We consistently yeah. drop the ball. And we allow others to get in our factions and, and, and infiltrate our factions to bring us down every single time. And then we're the mockery yet again. Well, you know, I don't say that. I agree. They got mad. They got mad news coverage. So something's up. I Mark agree. They got mad at news the same coverage. Time, at the same time, I will say people were put in high positions to make sure the ball was dropped, to make sure that message didn't get to us you know what i'm saying like it could have been in the plans but they, you know what i'm saying they, they they put people in places to make sure it didn't happen interesting i don't know you know what what's up king cats oh go ahead so we are okay so that is the beginning of the we are the world they use the civil rights movement <laughs> to usher in the we are the world and so what is we are the world? Uh, uh, we're going to use us. We're going to lay down in the middle of the street and we are going to have the dogs bite on us and fight for civil rights to open up um, and, and to basically equalize things for the world. Because all that stuff that those people fought for, for Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement has only helped the world <laughs> so now the mexican is white right so um so so all this is is just to open it up to make it easier whatever um gates were closed here in the united states they use us to open it up so now they can usher in a whole new group of colonizers and those people have it easy so they coming in here and we did all this fighting 
and we did all of this. Um, you but know, see, trying wait, to wait, equalize wait, 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 wait. and legalize. We I'll be right back. Y'all got, got it. it. We Y'all didn't got do it. all of that. We didn't do all that. See, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, it's like, like you see how they doing all the stuff, the the the, the for the LGBT community and all that stuff now, right? And it looks like we the ones that wanted to do it, and we was advocating for it. No, we all wasn't down with that. They made it seem like we was all down for that. It was certain people that was down with that. And it was a lot of people that wasn't down with, with, with that. We are the world stuff and integration and all of that. So, no, we wasn't down with that. Okay, well, because here, why would we be down with that if we got our own businesses, we got our own lands, we got our own stuff? <clears throat> it's no different from us versus the Pan Africans today. Like, okay, we we like our fight is yo, this is my land. I'm here. I'm not from over there. So, I'm fighting for this right here. Our fight is not the same. So it's still got the same fight back then. You got these people. With the slave stuff, saying they came from somewhere else, versus the people that's already here, it's the same fight. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't down with that. Ain't no we to work. We've been here. Them niggas is with that shit though. And okay, then we I'm get bunched together. Quick, yeah, go ahead, bro. If I could, real quick. All, all I. All I see and what Sister Bethy and Isness showed me today in the start of this was the indoctrination and how they made the man of the home obsolete quickly. They needed you to be a follower, not a leader. They needed you to succumb to their will. They needed you to be a ghost. They didn't want you to be upright. They didn't want you to think for your family. They didn't want you to grow your family. They wanted you to be a willful slave, a useless eater. They wanted you to become something that they have already pre-programmed in many of people. And in actuality, they put your own in front of you to show this is how you're supposed to be. Follow these key figures. Be like them. Even though they are the ones that's teaching you wrong. Interesting. And it does go back to um, the family, and it also goes to what Alabama always saying is is that um, they yeah, are I'm trying to exter- the exterminate the Indian. And so when I was reading and doing my research, I found out that extermination only means that you don't call yourself an Indian no more. Right. That's that's when they're talking about they exterminated all of us. That's just them saying that you're not calling yourself an Indian no more. Now you're calling yourself an African. They have therefore seceded and exterminating the Indian out of you. You are no longer an Indian. You're gone. So how do you exterminate this group of people? We want their land. These people are stealing your land (laughs) little by little by little by little. And how they do it without going into an all out war because an all out war didn't work. Right. That it, it that was too much for them because we put up we will put up a good fight. You put our backs against the wall. We gonna fight. Right. So how do they do it smoothly? Well, they took away your family. And that's what you guys are talking about, um, taking the dads out of the homes. Um, you know, as we learned the other day, promiscuality, homosexuality, we're going to kill the family. We're going to kill your upward mobility. We're going to um, take away all your uh, self-determination. So we're going to tell you to go work for the man. You ain't going to want your own job. And matter of fact, if your friend or your cousin has their own company, we you are supposed to go and look down upon them and talk about they scamming or they company ain't nothing and all this other type of stuff. And this is how they're exterminating us and taking us off our own land. So now we done got hit to the jobs or they decided they don't even want us to work for them no more. They, they're done. That stage of life is over. So now they've just imported 20 million people up in this place 
So now they're going to be your bank tellers. They're going to be your teachers. They're going to be your store clerks. They're going to be everything. And so now what we going to do? That's just the next stage of our colonization that we're just sitting back and looking at. And it's, you know, it's sad. Isness, just go ahead and say it flat out. They're going to do the job many won't do. Oh, no, they will do because I will go work at a bank. I will go work at, I mean. um, in a, in you know a government I mean. office. I'm, about total. I'm just talking about in total. They're looking at how to replace. This is replacement migration. I'm sorry. But I don't think it's wise to say that they're doing stuff that we won't do because when they're talking about these people, they want us to picture in our imagination because remember, they always bring up the farm worker, the person picking the fruits, and they're doing the jobs that nobody else wants to do. Well, they're not just doing that. They're working in all of our tech companies. The people right now who own this YouTube, immigrants, <laughs> right? So, um, and who work for the, who is uh, YouTube subcontract subcontracting with? What businesses are they using? Immigrant businesses. You know, our, our government offices got immigrants in them. The banks got immigrants, like everything. It's pure immigrant. Like we like, especially where I'm at, it's bad. Like you'll be lucky to see one black person, you know, or quote unquote black. So what I'm saying is, is that they're not only doing the jobs that we don't want to do. They're doing the jobs that we want to do. Yeah. Look at Best Buy. All their tax for Geek Squad are uh, India. The street all, guys, all you know, like I say, you know, we all live in different places. The street guys are foreigners, whatever you call those people. Just outsourcing. You know, the, the, uh, the guys who fix the streets. Yeah. You have a population that they deem are lazy, uneducated, don't have no moral basis. All by design, of course. But what I'm saying is that it's the jobs. I'm too good. I need to start at the front of the line, not the back of the line. They're proving the point. They're driving it home right now. Mm. What say you guys? Kaz, I can't hear you. Kaz, I don't hear him. Oh, well, we got to get your stuff fixed, Kaz. But that's like real interesting. I, I, I will say that immigration, I am not ashamed to say that immigration is a huge problem. It is colonization the same thing that we could go back and look in 1500s and we looking at these irish folks or these english people coming here now it's the world <laughs> you know so i am not ashamed to say that uh immigration is a huge problem for us mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. would not be the next next stage of 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 changing your name again i see it coming on the tea leaves you won't be a you won't be an afro-american no more <clears throat> oh no no i mean if you really look at it they just imported like you said 20 million people they're coming to let you know you don't matter no more this is the next installment of what colonization looks like it already happened in britain like what 10 years ago Eight years ago, they had a migrant flood. Just look at the trends and everything that's going on, and you'll see how the rollout happens. So, that brings me to my question. Let's say we pull away from this government. And we all got under just for how Ali Bumar government. Not saying we're going to do that, but 
Do you think they would bomb our government out? At this stage in time, no. It would be too obvious. It'd be way too obvious. Well, the government so, never hided itself when they bombed Oklahoma. No, they just sent the infiltrators in and made made the events possible. Well, that's government. Your planes flying in the air, dropping them down on Oklahoma. I just want people to do the right thing, not some of the time, all the time. That's what nobody answered my question. If we are one under Dane's new government or Ali Muhammad's, or it's just split up, half of us went under that government, the other half went under, under Dane's, the other half under Ali Muhammad. Do you think that they would bomb our government? No. No, not at all. It would be too obvious. Why? It we are we we this is the time for us right now. I believe that wholeheartedly in my heart. I'm a man amongst men. Even and though I, they can yeah, blow out our whole municipality. Not as long as that we have a standing self-government self-sustaining government in their law. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. It would be too obvious. That would show the, the, the what their true agenda is as far as anything under our will. It would be too obvious. Hmm. The will of the people stands on the people. I'm not looking for government handouts. I'm looking for people to do the right thing. Again, not some of the time, all of the time. And any any way we want to slice this up, however it may be, you 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 pick factions and whatnot. If the intent was to destroy at least one of them, let's say they came for whoever. Mm -hmm. That will show the malcontent of the people's knowledge, correct? You know what? I'm a little bit more cynical because uh, one of these um, lives with Sister Bethy I was talking about, I watched a document documentary with, um, and it says, who killed Malcolm X? And the person who killed the Malcolm X was not a white person. There were uh, us. It was us. And so if we started these communities, all they're going to do is send one of our little, we not on, we don't got it like that. And that's where it goes back to what you were saying. What I say is the family. Once we can establish our family and what it is to actually be connected by blood, then um, we don't need nobody to come and drop a bomb. You know, all we need is some little Jealous person with an AK that somebody gave them. All the white person has to do is go to give you an AK. Next thing you know, it's over. So um, I don't think where our mind is there yet. We have to establish a community first. Or, you know, we maybe it is time happen. to go like the scripture. Maybe the, like the scripture said, maybe it's time to leave <laughs> and head to your own little town and don't look back. You know? I, I say, like Taj Tariq Bey always says, is the black leaders selling you out. They've been selling us out for years and years and years and years and years. And that's why it seems like we're still in the same exact space. It's the leaders that have been selling us out. But why do we fucking keep going by leaders? That's our problem. We keep it's looking not for even people. necessarily looking for leaders. They put people there and say, yo, this is the leader of so and so. You know, this is the leader of the black community. Like that's what they do. Like, like, like they the ones make it seem like like today, like they make it seem like celebrities 
and their views on politics <laughs> and stuff is so important. They keep putting these people in, in, in those places. So I live way the, 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 on the East Coast, right? My parents mm-hmm. and them ain't never walked behind Jesse Jackson and Martin Luther King and them. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't wasn't tell my leader. daddy that Jesse Jackson. You couldn't tell my daddy that Jesse Jackson was a sellout. Mm. All the way to his grave, he believed Jesse Jackson wasn't a sellout. And you know, I I work in the barbershop. <laughs> I'm always debating. I'm debating all these old niggas all day, every day, about all of this kind of stuff right here. And mm. it just was. They they wasn't really too educated. It you know they had the internet and all of that stuff like we got now. But they all had have skills. You they all got skills. Have, have y'all? Kaz, I, are, you sorry, are you here? Are you? No, you know what? Kaz, have you... I can see him back here. He's on the panel. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Have y'all he noticed when they point. say leaders that there's not like a white leader or, uh, you know, there's all these Asians here in the United States. They don't, they don't have no Asian leaders. But when it comes to us, we have a black leader, Jesse Jackson, or a black uh, leader, Farrakhan, or they'll That's say the role models. <laughs> Well, this, you know, this this guy is a, like a little boy that was caught with a gun. They were like, oh, but you're a role model. <laughs> He's just a basketball player it, with a gun. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they put these people here to be our leaders. We never said never Jesse Jackson is the leader people. of black people. I've never seen Asian people protest to get jobs over here. Well, they're pretty set up, though. But the Hispanic people weren't set up. And what did they do? They had us go and protest and say they need, they do not have to protest. They had us do it. Our black Congress member, they chained themselves to their desks talking about uh, that the Hispanic kids shouldn't be in foster homes. They but shouldn't he's be. He's not really us. our black Congress member. He's not really for us. You know what I'm saying? If he was really for us, he wouldn't be in that position, period. You know? Well, I'm saying it's is so they don't have to protest because we'll protest for them. <laughs> That's how crazy we are. Yeah, I, we'll if go I was a Hispanic, them. if I was a Hispanic, I'd do the same thing. I'd be like, hey, get them niggas right there and get them boy to do it for us since he can't do it. I'd do the same thing. But see, that or, goes back to what I was saying right there. What you're doing is perpetuating the same thing, the same ideology or theology of your oppressor. Or if I I can't even say oppressor, that's just sheer ignorance by will, because you're allowing someone to make you do these things, knowing you know better. You know, okay, I'm going to play real. That's what Malcolm X used to say. Malcolm X said, listen, the white man is too smart. The white man is too intelligent to let another man come inside his neighborhood, open up stores, open up businesses, control the educations, control the job, control the music, control the welfare, control everything. The white man is too intelligent to do it. Do to do that. What is wrong with you, Negroes? You know every time you spend money out your community, you make another community richer. And your I'm community play- poor. I'm Malcolm X used to tell him that, but we just so down at that point. Like, I don't know. Can y'all what hear happened. me? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to play the dummy again. Oh, man. We. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what if we. Uh, the uh, Okay. The word game. Remember, they said the words, it, trick with words. Oh. What if we keep we keep pro- protesting? Uh, we keep protesting for for civil rights, right? What 
what if the civil rights is not for us, it's for the foreigners, and we so stupid, we keep protesting, and they keep bringing forward it, because we're protesting for civil rights. <laughs> we so dumb and don't know it. <laughs> That's it. it. That's it right there. Drop a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Drop a bomb. <laughs> but hey, those niggas are sellouts, man. Listen, man, we had the little, when we had the movements going on down here, right? Um, you know, I was riding with the boys, whatever. I was riding with the indigenous people, right? So we used to go at it with the Pan African niggas, man, right? We used to tell these niggas, listen, bro, y'all niggas need to understand the law and make a claim and stand on the claim instead of protesting. Protesting is not what's going on. These niggas is downtown. They got the signs. They got the, 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 the people riled up. They got the niggas coming from other places to come rally, to come protest. They got the hired, the people that they hired to come protest and come do stuff because they was doing that. Now, they was, they was like, pay you like $75, you get on the bus and come protest. And then you had the, the, the leader, the, the, the leader, which is my arch nemesis, this nigga's walking around with the bullhorn saying all the BS. You know what I'm saying? Now, this nigga done, he in, he in every single picture with the white folks that there can be. You know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga totally sold out on them, boy. But the thing was, our claim and their claim was different. Their claim was they came from Africa on slave ships, and now we're being treated badly. Just leave. A passport is two hundred dollars. A plane ticket might be five hundred. You can get on through instead of fighting to be a second class citizen. But like I'm I said, ask it's another easy. stupid question again. What if, like, you know how we're fighting for our rights as aboriginals on this land, right, as aboriginals? Because when you say aboriginals, you, it, it, it's the whole land, no. mass, the whole continent. Right, right. So right. now all the aboriginals from North, Central, and South America, they coming in because it, it was always their right to come over here and we can stop <laughs> <laughs> and then you advocated for it too, but you advocated for them, but not for yourself. No, that we all apply because we're all Aboriginals, right? That's what I'm saying. But those people, you fun fact, fun fact. Do you know the cost that it takes to put up a protest is the same amount that it costs to put submit a uh a, 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 a actual uh file in as as far as any kind of uh lawfare. The same amount it costs to make a protest, it costs the same amount to file a grievance, if not less, to file a grievance. <laughs> so when we say the rights of the indigenous people, When we say that, it's very powerful. So you got to think about who all the people in on the North American continent are. You got the people from Bailey's. You got the people from the islands. You got the people um, from Haiti, <laughs> Dominicans, all the aboriginals to the American continent. What y'all think about that? Which just goes to show the true blooded people stuck to making their way. I'm a Venezuela, had, Uruguay, uh, Peru, all these are indigenous people to the North American continent. It's not just us. What y'all think about that? But there's something about there's something about us here. 
And I'm saying that once, you know, you got this particular part of North America, the United States portion, uh, once we start doing, once we start making moves, then that's going to promote the other groups to start making their moves. The people from, you know, Brazil would be a real good one, you know, because yeah. they said there's more people in Brazil than there are in any country of, of, of Africa. There's more of us, you know, melanated people. Damn. So once mm -hmm. we start making our moves, these people will start making their moves, you know? It looks like they already did. They're coming across the border. <laughs> and they really, literally, literally cannot be stopped because they have jurisdiction over the 50 states, not the continent. No, they can't be stopped because somebody is funding those people. And it would be really nice if they were hey, all so Brazilians, hit the but link, they're baby. not. Well, I'd say that again. Somebody is funding all those people to come here. Somebody is funding them. And it's not just the Hispanic girl. community. I'm sorry, it's, yeah. I'm eating, I'm eating yogurt and oats. Nice. It's Go ahead, yeah. everywhere. The people who you are mean, coming uh, across is from everywhere. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Got you. Damn. I don't know, y'all. What you eating, isn't it? <laughs> um, I made chicken and rice for dinner. Chicken and rice? Mmm, that sounds good. That sounds real good. Y'all smash the like button. This is a very interesting thought. Um, and a very interesting segment. And everybody gave great, 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 great responses and something to think about. It's just, it's like, it's just been so many years that we've been um, requesting and requesting and requesting. Oh, my goodness. I don't know when it's going to stop or, or, or we just not getting it as a people. What do y'all think? I'm sorry. I had to step away. I'm back. I'm just doing, I'm doing a redirect. And I guess Ab is going to follow up over there. I love y'all. And this was great. But I definitely won't be live tomorrow because I got to work and I know I'm going to be tired. But this was great isness and smoke. I appreciate y'all so much. Yesterday was off the damn chain. I saw it. <laughs> I was I laughing so hard. It was real yeah, hard was to okay. stomach that Bill Cosby okay. thing, though. Yeah, it was. It was. I'm sorry, I missed. What did you guys say about Bill Cosby? Oh, oh you God. missed the beginning of the show? I'm, yeah, I missed the beginning. I saw the end. Oh, you got to go back. I guess I'll have to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Cosby narrates. And you're going to learn how we got indoctrinated. That was hard. Uh-oh. Is that my buddy? Is that you, my, Boo Boo? My sister from another mister. What up, hey. though? <laughs> hey. It's you this. Missed... Hello, hello. You missed a lot of questions, Alibamo. He wasn't oh, listening, so were you? My turn to be interrogated since I did all that interrogating last night. Yes, because it was a question for only boomers could answer. Okay. You didn't see it? 
I've been in, in a very dark area there. And I just got the signal back. So what's going on? All right, man. Brace yourself. And looking at this, all these leaders right here, right here. You got the five percenters. You got Jesse Jackson with a crowd of people. You got Al Sharpton, Huey Newton, and of course, you got the Hebrews, you got the Moors, and Martin Luther King. All this power over our people, right? Why? What went on? All right, 1921. We yet we understand that our we suffered the dismantling of the Negro businesses all over the states. Okay, that was 54 years ago. Now we get to the boomer generation. 1946 to 1964, and you were hanging out as an adult in the late 60s and 70s. What was it about these leaders? Were they, why didn't they teach, you know, instead of walking around with these fucking signs, how come these educated college men like Jesse, um, uh, Martin Luther King didn't help these people fill out EIN forms to start their own businesses as, instead of fighting for jobs. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not going to presume to know the mind of any other individual, but I would suggest answering a question like that. I want to hear you. From the training that these people as you're talking about all of them except malcolm though it could be argued that malcolm may have had the most advanced education beyond going to college but everybody that you've outlined has gone to either historical black college or in the case of martin luther king he went to boston university so when you are steeped in what you are conditioned and trained by your oppressor to do Remember that little back and forth we dealt with yesterday with that individual who was very, I don't know why he felt the need to not just curse you, but show his ignorance in the manner in which you don't know how to function if we're not on script. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the script that was released to the Christian Negro, and again, whether people not understanding my approach to the messages that you... Kunta Kente was beaten to Toby. What was Toby created as? A Christian Negro. What is a Christian Negro? A professed servant to mm. Jesus Christ. Isn't that what a, a Christian Negro is? Yes. And so until your master conducts what? For you to do. Now, as far as the churches themselves are concerned, these are congregations filled with the lost sheep. That's what the Hebrew Israelites would like to tell you. The lost sheep of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. While they're being told that they're Christians. They're told to turn the other cheek. That mm. is the reason why the nonviolent movement took hold in the civil rights. We're to allow dogs to bite eyes. We're allow water holes to drown our children. We're to allow... Uh, flamethrowers and literal bombers who bombed both Malcolm and Martin's home, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this was a continuation of a policy and a white domestic terrorism that went throughout what was referred to what we were taught in high school, the Roaring Twenties, was the actual bombing, burning, and lynching decade of the Negro. Now, where are those people in the wake and the rubble of those hundreds of communities that were burned down and in some cases actually done under the control and management of the local police, the militia, the constabulary, and in some cases the state national guards were actually reinforcing the white Ku Klux Klan and the Knight Riders 
running up. Now, again, remember, we're trying to look backwards in time in the 20s and the 30s leading up to the Great Depression and the Second World War, right? This picture is in the, the 1970s, though. Community. No, no, hold. We have to set the stage to get the correct context. Oh, oh, okay. Those Sorry. leaders, those men were sent off to die in France, in England, in Italy, in Germany, correct? Those who did not die, I'm talking about the business owners of those communities that were bombed out in the 20s and the 30s. Mm -hmm. When World War II came, they were shipped off or they shipped off their sons, right? Wouldn't that be the same warrior class that should have been there or would we hope would be there to defend the communities that were vandalized, bombed, and terrorized by white domestic terrorists? Now, by the way, I would argue we did do that. It's not reported. The question remains, why would it not be reported? Because the terrorizing white people were more terrified of the so-called Messiah, black Messiah, militant black man, unless he was sent off to fire guns and kill other people that he was directed to do, not to kill firebomb and destroy the people who were burning his own community down terrorizing his woman and kidnapping his children i know that sounds convoluted and confused doesn't it a little that's bit because that was in the 30s that, but that's only believing if that is exactly what negroes were a bunch of scared niggas now i don't subscribe to that personally but I do understand the need for continuing to teach such a narrative. The same reason you need to see slave narratives are coming out repeatedly in 2023 in all these new streaming platforms. You see the civil rights movement is now bombarding us almost on a regular basis. We're not even waiting until February to be showing Negroes submissive, water hosed, dog sicked on, firebomb because what's the message the fear-mongering message from white supremacist america is keep you niggas in check now if it isn't for the fact that we aren't already submissive and subdued which is what i would argue because otherwise why would you have to keep transmitting such a message if we're already subdued you, so, you understand what i'm saying Yes. So like you like to, and I, I appreciate you doing, bringing that perspective, I'm not calling these people hood rats. And I don't say this to be funny or pejorative or insulting, but Pookie, Ray Ray, Shanene, Kilolo need to be empowered. And I'm not talking about just putting a gun in their hands and turning them loose. I'm talking about putting a stick of dynamite between their ears. Do you understand what I mean by that? A knowledge that explodes their mind, expands their consciousness, centers themselves as the true American they are already by birth. Understand what that birthright means. Get them to understand How? you need to be putting 10 toes. What do you young people say? Is this 10 toes down in your patch yeah. of shirt and defend well, it but to death? But what, what? How do what, you? Um, I'll do this really quick. Um, I you skipped way over. You went from 1975 to Pookie. 1975. Instead of holding up signs for jobs, why didn't these college-educated leaders tell these people to open up their own businesses in 1970s? Rather then hold signs up to work in companies where all those religious groups um, fucked up their mindsets to make them say that, you know, all oh, the white man is the devil, but forgot to tell them, okay, now you got to go pour, apply for a job in their company unless you open your own damn company. Why didn't the baby boomers open up businesses, okay, and then if they open them up, they educate us who is Generation X to open our businesses. No one was thinking. 
Go. You got it. Go ahead. Now, ask know, we're it's, making, it's, we're, we're, we're well, I wanted it's Isness to go. I'm sorry. Well, I don't before, care who. Goes. Even before she responds to it, we're making sweeping statements. But go ahead, Isness. I don't care who takes it. I'm sorry, Puma. I you I would love for you to answer that. Well, I was going to address two specific incidents and individuals or organizations number one jesse lewis jackson which most people are not aware of or do their homework as bap says on operation bread basket and rainbow push are you familiar with the factual history of those organizations his personal organization not the southern christian yes. leadership conference right okay? right Mm -hmm. Do you know he went to corporate America and fleeced them? I'm. This is my opinion. This is my spin on describing what his policy was. He went and fleeced corporate America and got franchises. So, for example, O.J. Simpson running through the airport. How do you think he got those Hertz franchises that he handed over to his white in-laws? He didn't give a single. Orenthal James Simpson didn't get a single Hertz franchise to a black member of his family. But he did get those franchises. You follow what I'm saying, my mother? Now, the National Urban League, what is their mission as an organization, allegedly? Employment of the urban Negro? So they say. Why today in the year 2023, how many black businesses have been started, initiated, supported, gotten funding from or through any processes controlled by the National Urban League? Now, I'm not answering your question with a question. I'm setting up the context of answering your question. First and foremost, any organization we're talking about, which I know you don't like to discuss them specifically, but it cannot be dismissed or overlooked that the ish small hat community created all of these organizations not one or the other, all of them. Did you know the National Urban League itself and the NAACP had written into their charter that they could not own land or property? Did you know that, Queen Mother? And actually, speaking from something I know of personally, the local chapter of the NAACP only recently got control of its own headquarter building in Houston's Third Ward about 15 or 20 years ago. So we can't disregard that there is either specific policies or mentalities afoot like that particular community who Jesus is supposedly a member of the 12 tribes, whose certain leadership of the so-called Christian community, Jesus professing Bible thumping people bow to that community. You understand what I'm explaining, Queen Mother? Yes. So when we're analyzing these things, we must analyze them in their proper context and as a whole. In addition, all the businesses that were burned out and bombed over our community, the first community that came in invading our communities and getting businesses started up was that same ish community. And wow. then the other immigrants have followed suit when they got wealthy and they vacated the ghetto, which, by the way, that word historically was attached to them throughout Europe. You feel me? But how so does the... organize the ghettos? No, just let me land my plane on this. Okay, all right. These are problems with how facts are stubborn things. When you live in a condition and something designed outside, external to you, this is not an excuse. I'm not explaining things away. I'm explaining the fact of the situation. You can't expect people to know how to navigate something when they are poorly educated or they are conditioned and trained. Remember that rat experiment we talked about, Disney? Yeah. So when people are conditioned and trained, they will behave as they are trained to do, correct? Yep. And the traumatizing of hundreds, if not thousands, and I would argue is many more than that, more like tens of thousands, because we can go and identify every man-made lake in the United Snakes of America as one of our communities flooded underneath it. So if we're going to address this issue, and by the way, we should address this issue, it must be considered in its proper context 
Now, moving forward, we need to empower each individual household with whatever skill sets that they may have by getting Kilolo and Shanene, these so-called single head of households, to start by taking them weaves out of their head and take control over $8 billion, which you could do this weekend, getting Big Mama to babysit <laughs> and having vouchers follow their children to create private schools. And I could go on and on, but you do see the examples of what I'm talking about. You know what? It was really funny. You know what? It was really funny because I was going to ask, like, okay, you just said that these pe everybody has been traumatized. And, and so we have... Uh, Key Lolo, right? And and so what do we do? You know, how do you, like you said, put the dynamite between the ears? How do you do that? And you just gave a great example. Of okay, shall I shall I reiterate? I, I know you didn't mean to necessarily step on it, but shall I reiterate that she could be doing her hair and snatching the nails and then weaves out of her head and disempower those Koreans cursing over your feet? That is eight billion dollars right now that black women quote unquote single strong i don't need a man women could take charge of this week right. you understand what i'm saying is yep those same in the ghetto in the apartments that big mama great great grandmother whomever who is babysitting for them while they go do whatever ratchet lifestyle they have, could be organized into babysitting slash homeschool, private schools with voucher programs. This is, by the way, one of the planks for your voting campaign, my dear, if you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, those are two specific examples of empowering people over something they have 100% control. And I yield. But you left out Pookie and Ray Ray and Little Man. Yeah. Fixing cars. Fixing cars. Because because Pookie and Ray Ray don't matter. They're nothing. That's why he did not speak about those particular items. Are you those saying that? Uh, you don't, you don't, have, you you don't, don't have to attempt, attempt to put words in my mouth. I can provide a similar example as I just did. No, did these people don't the matter, matter, bro. Just, just let me well, talk. They don't, they don't matter to you. you. Gotta, That's you your attitude. You are not going to project on me your sickness. But listen, just listen for a second. Can you please close your YouTube window? Because regarding the fact that you're disagreeable and disrespectful, I will answer you even in your ignorance. As Isna said, there are very much things that can be done. When we took out wood shop, metal shop, mechanics out of the schools, we allowed the system to turn wayward young men loose. So they could be given the same opportunity to create skill sets, carpentry, plumbing, electrician. We already know what a man can be put to do if a boy is giving a skill set. Right, Queen Mother? And so one of the I things that he can do is to tolerate, make sure... I'll, I'll, I'll land on this business because I personally will not tolerate even an idiot who's self-hating to talk about how other black boys, quote-unquote, flag on the plate, or men are nothing. That means you are looking at yourself in the mirror, and I feel listen. sorry for you, sir. Cut your YouTube. I, listen, I, listen. I want to say something. Hold on, Sister Betty. Listen. Wait a minute. Can I say I something you, real quick? I, yes. After yeah, you close your YouTube, YouTube window, you're window, echoing. You're echoing. I, I don't think I'm echoing at all. Like, I'm anymore. really trying. Is, is Am I still borging? I just want to say, like, um, that's stereotyping people. Like, like Tyrone, Pookie, Ray Ray. Like, if we can really dig into these different kind of energies and, and and kind of break this this scenario fuck shit down 
What do you mean stereotyping? You mean stereotyping? Because you're the one who came here and said that they don't matter. They don't. Why don't, Why don't my sons, my sons matter? matter? Is he a pookie? A pookie, a, a pookie, ray, 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 because society because looks society at my sons, sons like that. If I don't. Look, to jail, I, hey, listen. Wait, I don't wait, have to wait, listen. Wait, 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 wait. Hold wait, up. You can't wait, come wait, up wait, on somebody's up show, on somebody's show and be disrespectful. You ask me to uh, break it down to you and explain it a little better. Because when you came up here, your energy was messed up saying they don't matter. For somebody to tell me my son don't matter, do you know I, all kinds of thoughts are in my head that I can't even speak of on YouTube? Okay? I'm talking about Pookie, Ray Ray, Lacretia, Shakisha, Little Man, who probably went to jail for selling some weed and they got a felony for the rest of their life. And you're telling me they don't matter if they want to transition into their own business. So why 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 don't they, why matter? Don't they matter? Is my question, my question to you. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna tell you why they don't matter. Because when you fall into the this like as a, as your parent, you were the parent to these children. And, and if they actually was on that level on a Pookie or a Ray Ray or a Tyrone, like if they actually really fall into these particular mindsets and, and pitfalls, that's We're your fault. About, about, We're, no, it's We're, not. No, it's because... Not. Because if once they're out once of they're our, homes, our homes and they're 25, and they're 25 years, old, years old, they're grown they're men. Grown men. My son, okay. our sons didn't okay. sell, sell drugs when they were when they in were our in home. Okay, cool. Hey, cool. I got kids. Like, listen, listen. Like, I, I think that I think that this thing is, is is a real issue, right? That's a real issue for you. Like, I have to teach my children. I, I got I got young men. I got a, I got an older daughter. Like I teach them the real shit, and and if they decide to make bad decisions, guess what? That's on them. So you're, so saying, you're saying that, that fuck, you, fuck you, you made a mistake, you made a in, your mistake life, in your life, so you're punished so you're for the rest of your life, life, and, you're and you're doomed, and you don't deserve, you don't another, deserve chance. another chance. Is that no, what you're no, telling no, me? No, 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 I'm not. I'm not saying that. Only convicted. Remember, some of these people. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. But I'm just saying, like, you're gonna pay for not listening to me. No, you I don't believe in punishing nobody for life. You know what? I hate you. Get out of here. Oh no, this, this, this bastard. He gotta go. I can't take. I can't stomach niggas like him because then I will be put on a fucking terrorist list. He gotta go. Uh -uh. And he was causing an echo I can't. on top of. Yeah, I, I can't have people like um, that on my panel that tell me that my fucking son don't matter. You 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 can't come up here and do that. No, that that's a no no to me. You don't no, tell it, me the interesting that thing, you Queen punish Mother, somebody because for I don't life. know whether I I answered correctly or fully what you asked, but he exhibited the behavior of your question asking me why these elite minded Negroes act in the way that they do in the way that he spoke casting aside who with such attitude those are the type of niggas your family he cast aside he cast aside his family and what i said yeah. what did i say earlier once we realize it's about our blood it's about our family then a lot of this stuff can be alleviated so he just illustrated on what it looks like and which we do because I've seen it is we cast aside our own family and ain't nothing going to get fixed until our families are intact. He's more concerned about his son being punished for not listening to him than he is about helping his son transition into a civil life. You fucking asshole. Those are the motherfuckers I can't stand. And motherfuckers like that are in the Christian churches because that's how they think they don't believe in second chances 
That's at indoctrination. All. That's indoctrination. And people like him, I can't stomach. You don't sit up here and you come on my channel and boldly tell me that it's my fault when you don't even fucking know me. How do you know? How do you know I didn't raise my son with morals and not to do things? But when he got out the house and he was 25 years old, he decided that he wanted to sell weed. And then he goes to jail for a year. Not to say that that happened to my child, but I'm just giving a typical scenario. And you're telling me that he did his three months in jail, right? So he deserved to be punished for the rest of his life. How dare you come up here and say that to me? See, I, I can't even speak in no language known to man on what I could do to somebody like him. So I'm just going to stay silent and use the five senses that I have so I am not censored. And those five censors that I have is my thoughts. So YouTube can't censor my thoughts. I really wish. You know what? Um, there was a guy who just spent 17 years in prison for something that he did not do. So when he gets out, now he's traumatized. So he's driving down the freeway. The police officer pulls him over, pulls him out of car with in a hostile manner. The guy's like, what did I do? He's, this man is traumatized. This man is now dead. The police yeah, officer, no, I saw that. That was a couple of days ago, right? I saw yeah, that. Yes. And so Terrible. we there is no way that we could look at that man and say he did something wrong. You know, what why did he have a felony or you know, why did he spend 17 years in prison? He spent 17 years in prison for something he was exonerated for. He did not do it. It was wrong. Right? And so when he gets out, how does he get a job? You know, if this man can't go and get a job and 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 you could clearly see he's traumatized. He was in fear of his life when that cop was pulling him out. And so he went into autopilot when those uh, tasers went inside his body and he's trying to pull the tasers out. Then it goes bad, right? Because he's been traumatized for 17 years. And for us to look at that man and to just um, say it's his fault or his mama didn't do something right, that's wrong. Yeah. But the other problem with a mentality like that which is always interesting to me. It's so easy to see the flaws in an individual and completely ignore the system's evil structure. I'm not even talking about flaws. I'm talking about the entire system is based on the depravity of draining the Negro and creating the nigga and make you a dehumanized piece of property. Now, the system is not under scrutiny and not getting the same irate response from an individual like that. Why, why might that be? Oh, it's easy to attack if, it's if to I attack could, just the back. I think this will, this, I think this will do one. It's easy to attack an individual. It's <laughs> easy to take the victim to task as opposed to getting the victimizer under punishment. Now, the same way that you asked that question about why didn't the leadership, this particular group of people that we've called the civil rights leadership, why have they misled the entire generation? Uh, Alibaba, Martin said before he died that he Alibaba. lamented integrating his people into a burning house. Is that not a quote? Out of his you know, mouth. she also That's included right. she also included the NOI and the five percenters. Um, so when we're just can you just include them? As That's only about this? again. I don't care about clubs. Okay, they, they, there doesn't matter what the congregation is. Doesn't matter what the belief system is. Their attitude is: if you're not a member, fuck you. That's what this gentleman just expressed. Yeah. If you aren't either following my code, what I defined as appropriate behavior, or what I describe as the requirement for you to be a member of my gang, my group, my congregation, where did they get that mentality from, if not from the oppressive system? And what that's what I was... These same groups of people, what are they railing about? The Masons? The secret societies? The 1%? What are they also not only crying about, 
but are emulating the same behavior. Facts. That person could not be sitting next to me right now. I'm serious. I don't know who he is, but those are the ones in the community that they're just horrible for our community. People with that mindset is are the people that I can't take in our community. And there's so many of him in our communities like that. But isn't that Sister Bethy showing the entrenchment of the indoctrination? It's showing the depths that people will go with their kids of indoctrination. <laughs> You know what? At this point, I don't see that particular behavior as a, 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 a side effect or of indoctrination. I see that as a personal judgment coming from his own ugly soul against his own people. And, and it, uh, he's also demonstrating hate for his own people. That Sister Bethy. can't possibly come from church. Yes. Sister Bethy, can I disagree? Because I do think that's church. Because oh. we we see a church on every corner and we see all these poor kids that ain't right or could use some help. They could just even be homeless, need some help with their pg &E. And the church members look away and they go to church and they go to their uh, conferences and they buy their Bible bags <laughs> and they go on their retreats. And nobody is worried about their nieces and nephews or their children, for that matter, until it's a funeral. Then everybody comes together and they have their funerals. And I'm saying the church ain't out there helping the surrounding their children that's surrounding them. That, and I'm going to put an emphasis on it, nigga, that was on this panel, does not sound like a product of church. Okay. I mean, I get what you're saying because yes, it's this church members are like that. They turn their noses up and they look down on our community. That's true. But I don't think his particular situation comes from a church just by his energy. You get different energies from different vibes of people, groups of people. I could pinpoint a church attitude person on their, uh, negative outlook on our on Kiki, Pookie, and Ray Ray. But that particular motherfucker, that's not a product of church. I assure you. He's individually and I'm 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 talking about him on an individual. I'm judging him on an individual basis. Because you're right about the church. You're absolutely right. Pinpoint 100% on. But there's a different type of nigga in our community that's outside the church that's like that. And he is one of them. A nigga that hates his own people, even his own fucking kid. A church don't make you hate your own fucking kid, even though they turn their noses up at our community. Because there'd be a lot of mamas and big mamas in church praying for Pookie. This bastard will never bow his knees to transition to, and pray to transition Pookie. That's the bastard on Boys in the Hood. That cop that pulled over Cuba Gooden Jr. And remember, he said, You nigga, remember him? But and they say it was you such remember, venom do, and contempt. Do, do, it's easier. Do you to remember that scene? Uncle Isn't this, yes, I do. Uh, ho hold I'm up, um, Alabama. Hold up one second, sweetheart. Is this? Do you remember that scene in Boys in the Hood when that cop pulled over Cuba? Yes, I do. That's that motherfucker that came on You're the right. panel. You're right. I relinquish. Go ahead, uh, Alabama. You got it. Or in Django, the black slave catcher. You know, it's easier to, to identify a caricature like an Uncle Ruckus. You know, it's more insidious to see the minister of the congregation who 
has this sedity ass attitude. And then we used to say, I know I'm dating myself when I say the type of reference that shit eaten grin on their face. Because a snake grins right before it bites you, doesn't it? A snake's lips, whatever you have as a mouth, curls up and appears to be smiling just before they show their fangs. So mm. it's much easier for people to see an abru a brusque, abrasive, hostile, outward appearance, like I said, a caricature like an Uncle Ruckus. Okay? But that insidious bastard that's seducing you and telling you, go get this job. Work to your, you know, from can't see morning to can't see at night. We think those were the overseers, the slave drivers on the so-called plantation. What do they call them today? Supervisors? What is keeping up with the Joneses? That whole even thought process, what is that about? You ain't shit if you ain't got whatever this latest whatever may yep. be. Huh? That would be it. That would be it. Keep it up with the Joneses. That's church. What type of oh. mentality does that feed? I got to see my minister, my pastor can't be raggedy. I know you've heard shit like that. The perennial oh, building yeah. fund. Creflo Dollar said, God told me to have a private jet. Y'all need to make it happen. Yep. Right. And everybody made too. it happen. And everybody making sure that these guys got their mall churches and they super nice homes. And then they gotta go and they gotta help the, the, the poor kids people? in India. And they gotta do all now. They ain't doing this, they ain't spending a million dollars to help the kids up in just around a church. Those kids should be set, right? Just around your church. No, they got to go to I, India. They got to go to I, Kenya. I was, I was going to point out how they are doing this at the expense, not only of the congregation, but they are extracting money and resources from the community around. These same Negroes pass over the bodies of these people. Yeah, well, they money I laundering. Know, I would argue. Coming they're money from the laundering. suburbs across town so they can still say they went back to the hood they left one day a week. I'm... They money Does laundering anyone money analyze in Africa. That? Huh? They're 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 they they're, they're, they're uh, Does anyone analyze that behavior where upper class, supposedly upperly mobile people who are told and convinced they are better than the people and the environment they sprung from? Yes. And then Jesse you come back once a week. And step over the same bodies that you hold derision and contempt to because you look down your nose on them as opposed to extend your hand out to lift them up. Jesse Jackson. That's why I showed that picture of why don't he have all these niggas opening their own business instead of walking around with a fucking sign saying, give me a job. But even today, uh -uh. a toxic person like that, who I guess he thought he was bum rushing me and attacking me. Why you didn't say no? But the same people I mentioned, you said, fuck them, throw them aside. So why would I even want a person with such toxicity even amongst us? What could they possibly do of benefit to any young people? Facts. Infiltration. Jesse Jackson. I mean, I mean, Al Sharpton. I mean, Al Sharpton is a well-known FBI informant. That's fact. I How can believe How is he able it. to do what he's doing? I, I don't, I can't. So, so uh, Queen Mother. And in the other community, and in the other community, um, I believe that they are also, they might be siphoning funds because we were watching a clip the other day and the lady in South Africa was talking about Israel and she mentioned Morocco. Now we know a lot of the quote unquote Moors 
go to Morocco and pay homage to, you know, was it Marrakesh or whatever, go to Marrakesh, you know, so, um, you know, there's some more funds being siphoned out of our community into Morocco. So it's not just a Christian church that's doing this. Um, we can also see it. And then, you know, Saudi or, or what is that? Palestine. Ain't that where the motherland is or whatever? So it's not just the Christians that's doing this. The Moors are also doing this or the, the Islams. Yeah, I didn't leave. That's why I didn't leave none of them out the box. But it's just mind boggling for a Negro to come on a panel like that. Those kind of Negroes are the ones that I just can't stomach. Period. Point blank. But out of his toxic behavior, he, he <laughs> this is a sad state of affairs, Queen Mother. But they, they don't matter. They are just, well, no, they believe that they're justified with this type of response. No one helped me, which is very ironic to me because every person who says those type of things, like mm -hmm. pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, mm -hmm. or they perpetuate the mythology of Horatio Alger. They seem to ignore some simple facts that someone other than you gave you a break. Some break, somewhere, sometime. Someone well, other if the than government yourself, says that we have to... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just pointing out the, the hypocrisy, the fallacy of the people yeah. who say these things. In particular, many of them in the Republican Party. But now while it's... they want to pull the rungs no. out and the latter up when they have personally been i'll tell you for a fact right here mm -hmm. the governor in texas the wheelchair governor you say the hurt. republican party he, he got hurt no I'm all they want us to do is get jobs listen I, to what I, I'm saying. I mean listen to what i'm saying queen mother this man was hurt in an accident was paralyzed for the rest of his life was wheelchair bound as soon as he got his money awarded he lobbied to keep cap and prevent others from getting punitive damages as in the fact that he received in his situation. So I'm only pointing out the hypocrite Abbott personally. And I can say the same thing about, you know, Clarence Thomas who rails against affirmative action that he personally benefited from and says that it's toxic and it is preventing others, he would claim others like himself to be fully appreciated and the hard work and effort that they did. But the real fallacy of statements and notions like that, the system is what is blocking people from opportunity. Not whether you work hard or not, deserving of it or not, the target was specific to preventing the American, not the Negro, but the people who think they are Negroes, who think they are Black, who think they are colored. The system has purposeful barriers and have described things said to be negro colored and black as inferior so if you know you're what? not addressing that the individual is always held to a higher standard as opposed to the standards of the system is corrupt i think a better that's why example would be that is 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 the asian community who has benefited from that but then went to court to take it down Right. But then, but Clarence but Thomas, they're trying on the other to hand, pull the same ladder up. You're, you're underscoring the point that I just made, isn't it? They're yes, trying I to am. pull the ladder up, which, by the way, they didn't fight nor die or struggle for the benefits to be put in place in the first place. But right. they so definitely are specifically targeting the victim community that it was supposed to assist while they're benefiting from it. They're letting white supremacists use them in court cases to dismantle the system that because could benefit no the people. Doing it. Those people are not those those people are not puppets. Those are real human beings. Nobody put a gun to their head. They willingly marched. I've seen it for years. They've been on these college campuses fighting against uh, affirmative action. It's not that the white supremacists used them. It's that those people joined hands and hand in hand. They went and they and they tore that down. Now, when it so comes does to it Clarence matter Thomas, their intentions, can you read this, please? Their intentions, if the targeting is still to target the people who the system was supposed to offer redress, because it has been proven time and again 
that the so-called Negro in America is being deprived of opportunities and success, correct? Well, what about this top Negro? Could you read this, please, Isness? You talking about Clarence Thomas? I asked the Isness to, Isness to read this. this What's it say? Clarence Thomas ruled against student debt relief. Now, a Senate panel alleges his health care exec pal forgave his $267,230 loan. Wow. So how are it? And when you go in it down here, he voted to shut it, the forgiveness down. But yet his got forgiven. And he, but, he, you're, but, you're again proving my point about the hypocrisy of the positions that people hold. But but that's I, I, asking, but this is not asking. See, when the, the pal forgave his loan, that was one guy. But when you're asking for Pookie and Ray Ray to pay for someone's college education, I think that's different. Because what you're asking is all of us who may have went to lower schools where we can't even get to college if we wanted to, right? Because our schools didn't teach us. You're asking us to pay for people's education. And I don't know. I think that takes a little bit of discussion. You know you know what, Isness? And I don't want to say this to make it sound more convoluted than it is. First and foremost, obviously, when we start having discussions specific to us, and I'm just only suggesting this for language purposes, the American, and y'all know what I mean by when I say American, and it must be defined clearly so that others know they are not American. Americans okay. should not be paying for school or education or training. Americans should not be taxed. Right. Now, all these things are being done currently because the American is not declaring that this is the policy that should be specific to Americans and Americans only. Now, as far as the current debt situation, and I'm one of those who have suffered going through college and all these student loans and whatnot, when we should not have been paying for an education that was teaching us against ourselves. A lie, correct. Because the education was actually turning you into something other than what you are. Yeah. And then I'm supposed to be in hock for it? And I'm supposed to pay back the criminal who's stealing my identity? Here you go. I, I mean, make that make sense. Yeah. There's a clarification so, for it. So, uh, uh, okay, now, you don't have to agree with me or not. I'm just stating a position. You can disagree or, or agree. Chop it up as you choose. First and foremost, declaring who is the American is required. I keep saying identity crisis is a thing. Identity theft is real. And only the person whose identity has been encroached upon and stolen can declare that has happened. That is the prima facie evidence of a fraud being committed. Right, Queen Mother? That is correct. All the elements are met. But you got it, and then I'm going to close out and redirect y'all to back. No, I'm landing my plane on that because I'll be going on and on about how foot need to be planted into ass. So thank you for the time. <laughs> okay, Ali Papo. <laughs> but straight smoke. Yeah, I'm I'm closing out. This has been a great segment. I didn't get all the answers I needed, but who can get all the answer? Uh, who can get all the answers in one segment? It's something to really think about. So I'm going to land my plane there and redirect y'all to add power.